You like Beyblade? Yeah, Beyblade was dope. Uh, it was kind of lame. What are you talking about? What are you? What? I don't know if this is going to be in the call, but I mean, Beyblade was Garbo. What? Wait, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Then what was your sauce? Was it Digimon or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh? I still play Yu-Gi-Oh to this day. Yeah, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is good, but like Beyblade... Wait, have this. you played the Beyblade games? No, why are there Beyblade games? They're so it, it's, good. It's, isn't it literally just like a spinning top? Sigh, sigh. We are following a ship with 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 the rubber boy. You're telling me you stop at spinning top sets? Yes, because it's, because it's a human. The, the, these, Luffy's these, a person. I'm not. I'm not following an inanimate object. Yeah, you are. Devil fruits. Beyblades are literally just devil fruits. That's all it is. It, no, I'm being serious. Anybody so, who's watched Beyblade and are there characters in Beyblade? Are there characters in Beyblade? Yeah. 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 Oh, so yeah. there's people that spin the top. Yeah, it's essentially each care. The, so the Beyblade has a will, like it, like oh it, think God. of it like as a you, Zoan. Okay, stop, stop. It's that, a Zoan that, fruit. Back to one piece. Has a will, chooses its user, and it awake. There's an well, awakening. <laughs> welcome back in, everybody, to One Piece chapter 1079. Today we have the lovely Par Vision here with us, uh, and he's here to talk about One Piece. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We got <laughs> the title of the chapter. You, you know, it needs no introduction. The red-haired pirates, which is obviously referring to Eustace Captain Kid. Uh, you uh -huh. know, thankful of Oda to finally give my man Kid a whole chapter. Love to see it. Yep, yep. And we got the, the the cover story going on here with Luffy watering a lion. What are your best insights on this cover page? What crazy thing can you pick out of this that has some deep symbolism? So you know, it, you know, rumor has it Oda took a uh, five years to make this one cover page. Where, where, source, trust me, bro? <laughs> yeah, 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 just, just trust, just trust. Uh, I, I feel it in my bones. I woke up and I had like my hands sprawled out like this, and I was like, five, five years? Oda, Oda, how? Thank you for the Why? sign, Oda. <laughs> you madman. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I obviously the sun stuff, but you know what? I like, after letting the chapter sit with me, I was like, I realized. These are what Luffy's doing here is he's picking flowers for a uh, kid's funeral. That's essentially what's happening. Oh my goodness. No, no. He, he's still alive, kid. Come on. They, like I said, they named the chapter after him. He can't be dead. Yeah. He, well, how, I mean, what happened to Ace when they named the chapter uh, after him? Hey, hey, hey. And Whitebeard. You know what's funny? What? Out of this cover page, the thing that's the most off putting is definitely the frog. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that. I like we got a I, lion, a sun, sunflower, Luffy. Like we have so many sun references, and then we just have a frog there. Yeah, yeah. In my live reaction, I was I like I I you can probably see the pause when I was about to bring. I was like, oh, this is weird, but I had no in like nothing came to my brain. It just went blank. So I was like, you know what? Moving along. <laughs> and <laughs> all right, oh, yeah. likes frogs. Uh, yeah, I have no idea off. what the frog. Oh, I mean, there's it the could frog be a guy. reference to yeah, yeah, the frog character later in the chapter, Garotini. But like, why? Like, why him with Luffy? And well, he's part of the main cast. Yeah, main cast. You're right. You're right. He's in the yeah, Emperor's crew, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, know what? It all makes sense now. Yeah, exactly. There, you, there's a reason they didn't show his bounty yet, right? They only do that oh. for the greats. 1000%. Everybody like, what, else... we, we didn't learn Shanks' bounty until like way later. It's the same for Garotini. Yeah, he, he was the reason Elgia was burned to the ground. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> he's the man that actually built Laugh Tale. He yes. crafted a whole island. <laughs> He's legendary island hopper, Garantino, or whatever his name is. He needs no ship. He just jumps. Yeah, I can't believe we didn't recognize it sooner. Ah, oh, man. Man, unfortunate. But yeah. speaking of sooner, in the beginning of the chapter, we go a few hours earlier, and we see mm -hmm. York munching down on some meat, and she says this is a little bit of a pickle. You know, the government's trying to kill me too, and... You know, I feel like it's, like, kind of weird, because it's like, damn, like, I was hoping her plan would be, more, be a little bit more concrete, but at least she has a contingency plan. She has yeah. some other plan that somehow still leads her to become a celestial dragon, and it's so interesting, because the only thing that comes to my mind is just maybe trying to trade Stella and the Cyberpole agents to the Godose, but even then, I just feel like the easiest answer is to always eliminate everyone, right? You have CP0 here, Kizaru's coming, St. Saturn, 100 battleships. Like, if they wanted to get Stella and the Cyberpole agents back, they wouldn't have to trade York, theoretically. 
Yeah. So maybe there's more to it. I'm just not too sure yet, but I, I, I'm having faith. I have faith in the world's smartest, greediest mind. You know, I, I didn't go too in on the York stuff because, again, it, it's one of those things where it's like, especially right now, we don't, it, we left York on a cliffhanger. We actually don't know what she's, what she sent a snake to go do. And you said something interesting, the contingency plan. She says, luckily I had a contingency plan just in case they decide to play it this way, right? That doesn't necessarily mean it's towards her end, same end goal. You know what I mean? Like the Celestial Dragon thing, that could be the goal, but like, and I'm not saying that it's not the goal, but there could be other ways outside of it. And what I mean by that is like, if she realizes that the Celestial Dragons won't take her, right? hopefully she has a plan a contingency plan for that too maybe that's what's in reference here right because they're looking to eliminate her too hopefully she realizes that and there might be another route and honestly now that i thought about it more maybe that route is what we see at the end of this yeah thing. Um, that's what is... i thought originally too i was like you know what maybe she sent s snake to go see blackbeard because he's off the coast and we do know that when something approaches the island they have pretty immediate knowledge of it so yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if that might be her contingency plan but i'm still not too sure yeah i i don't even know if s snake is needing to do that the s snake might be getting the thing that blackbeard wants or and uh blackbeard could be like you know i know caribou that, that that's a i'm all for that if caribou was the one who grabbed the den den mushi called blackbeard told him about the situation whatever that looked like on the law blackbeard winner's island situation cool right the other side of it is hey york could have called uh blackbeard and she maybe she's the 10th titanic commander that would be kind of cool yeah and then like that could have been the contingency plan this entire time where it's like um implementing all of this well you know who's one of the best schemers especially against the world government in the entire story it's between shanks and blackbeard essentially in my opinion and what we get an understanding of when we go into the arc is shaka wants to bet on a yonko crew he wants to bet on luffy the stella stella want to bet on luffy and they know the power of a yonko crew and blackbeard is one of them and so it's like do, they probably know buggy and shanks is, might be out of reach so maybe blackbeard was the one that york ended up putting uh uh their their um stocks, their stocks into. into exactly yeah so like and that would be really cool uh dichotomy because of what york says in the last chapter where it's like ah you think just like shaka essentially right which kind of implies that you know she has an opposite thinking um and or opposite um ideology and so who would she rely on someone with the opposite ideology of luffy which would be blackbeard and blackbeard you know, honestly, probably if I were to choose pirates to ally with, with uh, York's mindset, probably prob the best one because, you know, if you can't be a Celestial Dragon, then choose the person who's going to destroy the Celestial Dragons, right? Like, I, <laughs> Fair I, enough. Yeah, I mean, Luffy isn't necessarily going... N none of the Yonko are going to do that, right? The only one who seems like that is Blackbeard in this point and of the story. And honestly, Blackbeard has a lot of reasons to team up with York. Blackbeard is a devil fruit hunter, so we have York, one of the world's greatest minds that can replicate them. And also, he ran into some seraphims back on Amazon Lily, so I could totally see him being interested. And if York is like, hey, I have command of these bozos, if you let me join your crew, you can have them. Like, he would so say yes. There's no yeah. reason he wouldn't. Yeah, I feel like I Blackbeard, whenever he meets somebody impactful, he'll always come to, like, hey, why don't you join my crew? He asked that to, he even asked that to Ace, didn't he? Uh, he, yeah he yeah, even yeah, asked he ace like hey so. do you want to join my crew yeah yeah and then like, it's, it's just like a casual thing for him he was going after luffy and then ace was like ah i can't can't let yep, you do now, that now That's i can't brother. let you go yeah <laughs> i yeah. wasn't gonna let you go originally but now we're really in for it yeah yeah and so like i, I think that this explanation of things solves two it's like two birds one stone where it's like how why is blackbeard even here right at, at the point it make where it makes sense is like if he does if he doesn't get the news that Luffy's here, then how did he find out that um, Luffy's here? If that's the case, or was he already headed here for Vegapunk? And if it's for Vegapunk specifically on his own agenda, or if it's for Vegapunk, York Vegapunk, because of a York agenda or a dual partnership agenda, or the 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 
second subclass underneath that one is York like, yo, Luffy's here. I wasn't planning for that. Can you come over? Right? Like that could have yeah. been easily the, the situation. Cause what we also see is um Blackbeard is posted up on three islands, right? And we don't know where Luffy was originally supposed to go to, right? Like we're not sure necessarily if this was the island his log post was headed to um right i don't think that was ever confirmed um it wasn't really confirmed but i mean i don't think it really matters i feel yeah, like this is yeah. probably one of the islands but so. what i'm more meaning is like blackbeard is posted up for something right so he was yeah. kind of set up in a way to already be nearby so it wouldn't be a weird thing to say like hey like this is also because like he was here because he had somebody on egghead which would be york and i like that and um yeah, so so all it's around. It's not bad. Yeah, I think this is a. There's a lot of ways that the Blackbeard situation can fit really nicely here. Yeah, yeah, and I I think um, another thing that especially off the live reaction, we didn't talk too much about the Egghead stuff. We talked a lot about the Kid Shank situation. We memed a lot about that, so it was a lot of fun. But you know, in this in this uh, Blackbeard thing, I think um, I th we were. I asked you, you were both leaning towards Blackbeard being on the ship himself? Oh, or? no, no, no. No, you're, you're not on the Blackbeard. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not on the Blackbeard is the one coming here ship. Gotcha. So I, I feel like it might be like Lafitte, Shiryu, San Juan, Katarina, Vasco. Like, I feel like it could be so many different characters that Some, it doesn't even have to be Blackbeard. It could even be the 10th uh, commander that we haven't met yet. True. Some people say like, there's that a lot it could of options. be Aokiji alone, right? Like, yeah, uh, even Aokiji bizarre. would be dope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what, regardless of who it is, uh, it's probably like gonna be a run and gun kind of thing. Like, it, I feel like it, it. There's. I don't think it's a situation that like he stays for a very long time. Oh like, yeah. Think, like if yeah. if this is Blackbeard, there's no world in my mind at least where this is where they have their showdown, right? Luffy versus Blackbeard for all uh for all the poneglyphs. Like I don't, I don't think this is gonna be like the place of their final battle if it is Blackbeard. It could be like a place where we display his power, but we already saw it with Law. We didn't see it on Amazon Lily, but we saw like, hey, he's matching up with an awakened. Uh, no, nah, I still but don't here... think that's Blackbeard. Wait, oh no, 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 that. But that's what I'm saying. Like here, like it wouldn't, you, you wouldn't necessarily need to display his power, but you would yeah. expect that to be the transition of it, right? Like on Amazon Lily, we didn't get much, and then on uh, Winners Island, we got a little bit, and then Egghead, we get a little bit more, not the whole thing, but we, we kind of, I, I know a lot of people want to, but I just, it doesn't make sense for it to be now. But it would be interesting to see, like, if there's, like, a utility thing, right? Like, something that makes it so people fear Blackbeard. Because I think right now, and uh, a feeling is that um, that Blackbeard is everywhere, right? It'd be interesting to know if there was some, like, quirk, essentially, behind that. Maybe, maybe this is, like, you don't necessarily need to show his full power, but maybe this is how you reveal, hey, maybe there's three, there is three Blackbeards, or maybe Yeah, Moria... the three Blackbeard theory. Imagine Law fights Blackbeard, Garb gets the Hachinosu, Blackbeard's there, and then we see Blackbeard is also on this ship, confirming the whole three Blackbeard theory, which I even threw up three fingers for the quotation marks. <laughs> like, I yeah. think that's a cool theory. I, I honestly really enjoy that. I don't know who started it, but I've seen yeah. it floating around. I was I like, mean, oh, that's kind of dope. The three I don't Blackbeard know thing is... how that would really work out, but I'm cool with it. Yeah, I think the three Blackbeard thing was kind of like a hive mentality as well. But I don't know who was first because I imagine yeah. it's like on the onset of Blackbeard. Once you saw like the three skulls, it's like it starts making a lot more sense. But then you start like you start looking at the teeth. You start looking at Jaya. <laughs> you're like he likes cherry pie, but then he doesn't. And then he like likes to drink, doesn't there, like to drink. There's something there because like yeah. every pirate's Jolly Roger represents them in some way. Like Luffy with the straw hat, Shanks with the, you know, the scar. Like Whitebeard with the mustache. Why does Blackbeard have three skulls? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, can he eat a third devil fruit? Are there three of him? Like, what's what's up here? What's the up? three skulls? Uh, you know, a lot of other uh, people have put the. I'm pretty sure I've seen this at least. Maybe maybe I have. I don't know. But the ancient giants, like Orders, he had the three skull belt, right? And the, yeah, I think three skull necklace. So like the ancient giants, uh, you know, connect back to something like that. Um, and, and that could be Onis, right? We don't even know where if ancient giants and Onis are one and the same or separate or, or connected. Um. That'll be an interesting thing. And so I I was almost thinking, right, and, and this might be um, 
I I haven't seen uh, personally in in the stream. I don't I don't remember anybody saying this. Joy Boy, I didn't mention it either. I was I was kind of thinking about Blackbeard. Like, hey, we just got a character Vegapunk who split his personalities in six different ways, right? Yeah. And the long time running theory about Blackbeard is him splitting himself up. What if Blackbeard could actually do that? And Vegapunk Stella was a way to like you know um to to present the idea prior to a main main character uh villain uh demonstrating that and and originally you know a lot of people went to the gorosei and eem and that could be like the satellite uh stella situation and that makes a lot of sense but blackbeard could be another version of that and i actually was laughing because uh if you think about it um if York and blackbeard teamed up and this was the case there's something that we do know about blackbeard that is interesting he doesn't sleep right so it's like yeah. if you if you had three of them and you split up the eat poop sleep cycle and one of them sleeps for all of the the, the other two and the other two could just act that could be how it works kind of like a naruto with a sage uh, that'd be kind of cool i wouldn't i wouldn't mind that whatsoever yeah it'd be i Decent think that'd theory. be kind of sick there's so was... many like things with blackbeard like he's such a strange character like nobody knows how he's gonna play out exactly yeah. Like in my head canon, I've always imagined Luffy fighting Blackbeard at like the final island, right? Yeah. And then Luffy just whoops him. Like Blackbeard's good or good or no me does nothing. The Yami does nothing. And then Blackbeard's on the floor like screaming. And then Luffy's like, oh, that was it. And then all of a sudden, just something snaps. Yeah. And then I, like an entirely different character comes up. I think I think that, that's that's like my head cannon. Yeah, I, I I'm on that. I, I see that head cannon. I see the vision side. You see the vision. You you yeah. you see the personality uh, switch yeah 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 i mean the the i i like that for blackbeard i think there's many ways to go about it and we still you know what's interesting we still don't know what moria's role in is with uh blackbeard which is like uh, that alone can yeah, do so good old much Moria, yeah. right like it, it to me it's kind of crazy that you know we have been highlighting the warlord so so much like you know uh in the middle of wano not chapter 956 the debut the dismantling of the warlords the hunting of warlords the recreation of the warlords and all this time right to the point where when people, MIA. Saw, when people saw pythagoras's foot the the mini version they're like oh morio he's here oh my i didn't even see that <laughs> yeah I, was, I, I, was, I looked i was like oh that's probably pythagoras <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I remember people like, were like, "Yo, that's so Moria right here." I was like, "In the oh, live reaction, shoot, I, was like, I wouldn't mind Moria." Like even after reading the chapter, people were like, "Oh, that's Moria, right?" And I was like, "Wait, what do you mean? That literally was Py Pythagoras just showed up, and that like his foot matches." And like, not that's not the meme or dunk on anybody, but like, I was just like, I like the insight though. You know, people can see a picture many different ways and that that's just one of the the, the prime examples yeah and people and I, seeing moria where it's actually just pythagoras and, and i don't i don't necessarily blame them for wanting i think the want is there because hey he was an original warlord he was actually touted to be one of the scarier ones who that Whoa, boxed with kaido. Moria, he's busy right now he's fighting kaido he's clashing with them oh yeah he's still doing it yeah in yeah, the dream I mean, world? Gekko Moria, he, he could still fight Kaido, right? And Come if on. Uta sang him a song, would that be his dream world? He's beating Kaido down. That would be <laughs> his dream, right? Yeah, his dream would be beating Kaido, clashing with him one more time. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he would be the the uh, Yanko of em uh, of Wano? Like, Moria would just be sitting there? No, he wouldn't. That be, would right? be a cursed timeline. Like, instead <laughs> of... Imagine we fought Kaido on Thriller Bark, and then it's <laughs> Moria at Wano. No. Like, I don't know how that's possible. Like, he went that's from a great clashing with Kaido to just being a goober in Thriller Bark who's like, oh, you know, I realize that I don't have to fight. All I need are strong shadows at my command. And that's you know, like, uh, that's cool and all, but where did you get this mindset from? Did, did Kaido beat it into you? Like, <laughs> did Kaido have a stronger crew than Mori at the time? They never really told us how he came to that conclusion. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just thought about it during the break week, maybe we should do another call to do a what if of Kaido. If Luffy, like a beat up Kaido was on <laughs> Thriller Bark. No, <laughs> imagine imagine Kaido lost to Blackbeard. He's like, guys, give me back Absalom. <laughs> 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 it's just Kaido over there. That's oh, cursed. Man, yeah, that's, that's a cursed. fun one. Yeah, so I, I like, honestly, yeah, with this Blackbeard ship, Oda's cooking because I think Joy Boy said it the best where it's like this this reveal opened the the gates like any absolutely anything is possible now right i mean anything was possible but now yeah. it's like e somehow the narrator just, box wasn't lying it was an yeah. unthinkable shock 
And yeah, here's the yeah. thing. Imagine if next chapter, instead of getting revealed to Kizaru or Saint Saturn or Blackbeard, whoever, imagine we see the rev ships coming in. <laughs> no, like every, every chapter is just another ship coming in. Like, oh, here's the revs. And we're like, oh, what's going to happen? And then one more chapter goes by. Oh my God, it's Cross Guild. <laughs> like just one person after another. You're like, what is going on here? Is anybody going to get to the island? <laughs> no, like, I dude, mean, where, where's the ships? We're a hundred battleships. And you're telling me none of them reached the island yet, but somehow Blackbeard's three logs just nailed together made it here? <laughs> it's actual riffraff just floating on shore. Like, that is insane to me. So they had to have planned this out, or maybe Blackbeard knows some undersea currents that Shanks knows, because we know that's probably how Shanks travels. Like, th there's a lot of things there. But, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna go with the good old... Blackbeard just washed ashore. He didn't even I mean to come here. The, the, the logs hook him here the, not even the fate. log post just yeah, the logs he, he's all about fate and destiny he, he just ran with the currents he's like you yeah. know what that, going that with you the know flow. that'd be a sick like pirate crew they don't use the log pros they just float they and just use they, logs yeah they just yeah the no pose just logs <laughs> yeah, just the, the, the logs craziest, will take us where we need to go that'd be the craziest pirate crew if you think about it like they just they grand line nope we just float <laughs> we're the floating pirates <laughs> we just we just float guys come on yeah yeah and you know with the um with the like i think in 1078 off of it not that i was expecting the revs but if there was a third party at that point like we were talking i think we were talking about like the airships that that the revs would have flying in so like when we got to, when i got to this panel i was like Red? and then i was like blackbeard and then and then when what you said it's like are, so are the revs like coming next but then even i don't think so honestly the revs aren't ever gonna show up in the story yeah yeah i, I feel I like we could get you. all the way to laugh tail the revs still are gonna be like on kamabaka queendom saying whoa what is going on <laughs> it's like, gonna be two found, piece. The, found laugh tail like by the time uh they they mobilize buggy sitting on the empty throne like that's <laughs> <laughs> I could see Buggy sitting on the empty throne. Like, memes aside, I feel like that's something Oda would do. 100%. 100%. 100%. If yeah. Buggy ever goes to Marie's Raw, just know that scene's being cooked up. People, people still don't subscribe. I mean, I just, I just, uh, you know, clash with somebody on the, my Fraud Fraud Valley video where it's like, they don't see Rox as that character. But the, hey, there's only two characters that said they want to be king of the world. And if Rox actually was saying that, then Buggy's the next one who said it. So <laughs> Buggy and inherits wills. Rox's will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a thing there. And, you know, going back to the ships thing, I think what's more upsetting than even Kizaru and St. J. Isn't some of the ships leaving from like G14 or whatever the like. Bro, marine? G14 was supposed to be close by. Remember when CP0 showed up and then uh, Stellar Shock or whoever was like, oh, uh, CP0 wants to dock here? Well, actually, G14 is like a hop, skip, skip and throw away. Like, why don't you go there instead? Where, bro, where is G14? <laughs> like, they are still not here. Like, at this point, Insane like, Don Krieg is going to show up. <laughs> yeah, no, Gein is going to show up first. He's going to make it all the way here from the new world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we're going to find out that York has just been disguised as him this entire time. Or Yeah, he's there's, there's going to be something crazy, some, some goofy reveal. Yeah. So with the citizens, though, we, we kind of skipped over this, but the citizens, I, I personally don't think this subplot matters but because Oda is you know giving them some attention in the last couple of chapters I feel like this might go somewhere like maybe the navy's gonna shoot them down which I wouldn't be super surprised yeah. about maybe Blackbeard will shoot them down like do you think anything's gonna come out of these civilians? I think Akainu gets out of his seat and de replays Ohara real quick he said no survivors and just blows okay up I, I I talked about <laughs> I've talked about what you think is going to happen. Not not about my dreams and, and wishes, Par. Come on. <laughs> sorry to sorry to set you up for failure, but like yeah. like my heart is, skipped a beat for a sec when you said that. I was like, I kind of where is Kazaru going to show up? Like the other thing though is like I feel like this is different, right? Because it would be so bad, so dumb if you didn't put one of these pacifistas on the ship. Like I, I'd imagine they're on the ship and they have the ultimate bubble. They have defense. fifty of them. They have to be on the ship, right? Yeah, like two. Just put two yeah, or three. Two, one, three. 
Just, just a handful. You have yeah. 50. I at least spared these civilians five of them. Yeah, like, in my like opinion. Four, number 43 and 38. Like, the weird numbers. Just put them on there. Who needs them, right? <laughs> I was like, why were you picking out those numbers? Just yeah, the because, weird ones. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the weird R ones. Rest in peace to anybody who has those favorite numbers. Don't don't buy those in the lottery. 38. Well, I'm still laughing that there was a... We were slanting Flat Earthers on the 50-50 podcast, and then a Flat Earther commented, or a Flat Earther. It's so funny. Yeah. Let us know like if your 43 you or 38 is your favorite number. Yeah, 100. It, it better not be though. Uh, yeah, and and so like I I kind of this is this is my dream, Sai. You have the What's one up? where uh, innocent citizens are burned to the ground. My whoa whoa whoa, my... egghead citizens, not innocent. They've been studying the proglyphs. <laughs> what these people weren't? They don't even know. Hey, Sentomaru. How do we know that? Sentomaru how do we know that? had to tell them. How do we know that? <laughs> we know that because it, Sentomaru. It's, it's like Ohara. Like you literally could have just been like, "Yeah, I'm not a scholar," and just Wait, hop on board. No, these citizens of Ohara were like, "The scholars are demons." Like they didn't. They're I not would do all the scholars. same thing if I was a Stella body. Like, if I was the seventh you know, Vegapunk, I'd get on the ship, and then, you know, the, the, the Navy people are coming over, like, are you guys studiers of the Poneglyphs? I'd be like, scientists, what are you talking about? I'm a bread salesman. <laughs> so like, you're saying they're all Why acting? would you admit that? No, but, like, I'm not they, saying, they I'm didn't not saying have they're a reason acting, at but, the time. But I, I, I'm saying that if you really don't want the Void Century to get out there, and you are willing to do anything, like, burn Egghead, burn O'Hara to the ground, if you don't burn this ship to the ground, that's, that's like, that's negligence in a way. Like, I'm not justifying just, like, you know, killing all these innocent civilians. I'm just saying it makes sense on paper. If you want nobody to find out about history, uh -huh. what do you do? You eliminate the country. You don't capture them. And hold them. Too many mouses. You know, because clearly killing everybody on an island and just sailing away didn't work, uh, Robin. Um. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. All I got to say, there were about 100 scholars. There's only, there's only one left. And that's that, that's Robin. Hey, one percent of your history got leaked. You know what would have been better if you just took all of them captive and shut them up yourself individually. Or they could have had a sleeper agent. Imagine if they they sent Rob Lucci to Ohara. I feel like that'd be way yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. If they sent no. Rob Lucci to Ohara and he just chilled there for like five years so he could figure out who is a scholar, bro. Oh my God, you're so so right. much better. Wait, so, so much better. They should have done what? that. Wait, 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 wait. And then wait. they could have taken all the information for themselves. You know what? Maybe we don't need to kill the civilians. Maybe we just need to send a Rob Lucci to one of these islands next time. Obviously, no. it's too late for that. So Yeah, no, but, but I was just hind thinking. Hindsight, hindsight. I was just thinking how cracked and crazy, but it's already kind of like gone technically. I, I think, yeah, the, the, this, the possibility of this is not existing, but it's such a cool idea. If like... Vegapunk had a mole in CP0 for 20 years. The world government, once they acquired Matt, uh, Vegapunk, they put their own mole, just like Water 7. That would be cool. And for this entire time, they gained the trust. And it's like a, oh, flip the switch on Vegapunk. Because Vegapunk thinks he trusts everybody. But like... Yeah. But like one of his York satellites. York almost that person. If York actually was working with the world government, York could have been that mole, but that yeah. never really panned out. Yeah. Well, so, it, what I'm York thinking was is like uh, York was close. What I'm thinking is is beyond your and so I'm not guys. This is this is just fan fiction at this point. This fan, what, yeah, we're talking about fan fiction now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're deviating from the chapter. Is like at the end of it because York has a contingency plan against it, right? The person yeah. who foils it isn't even like a Vegapunk. It's a world government mole as a Vegapunk. So like, there's like multiple it's non -stop traitors. Double crossing. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that would be it's like so the Born sick. Ultimatum trilogy. Yeah, that. yeah. So I didn't get to say my actual d dream situation with the boat. I want them to make a bubble around the boat and they just play bumper cars against the boats. Like, and they okay, escape. but realistically though, if Kizaru saw the ship and he wanted to destroy it, do you think these five pacifistas would stop Kizaru? With a bubble shield? Yeah. Up this the ultimate defense. And they study What do you Vegapunk. mean it's the ultimate defense? I mean, they, they studied Loki. Kizaru. Ab Dude, if an Admiral cannot destroy have the five photonic pacifistas... Gloves. The fact they're, they're, they're not gonna touch Kizaru. Gonna what is what do the light you. gloves matter? Kizaru gonna, can be able to touch the sky hockey. and just like shoot down. What? Yeah, but they can bounce off the light with with paw paw and bubbles. Oh my and, god! And, no, and the no. photonic gloves. All right, Wait, you guys is... heard it here first. All right, comments comments section. 
do you agree with part? Do you think Kizar would lose the five Mark III pacifistas? <laughs> wait, wait, yes wait, can, no? we, can we say that like is blasphemous to even re- like to even 50, say 50, 50, 50. Can we throw in? Fi- Let me get 50, 25, 25 pacifistas. Dude, you honestly, Kizar could mop the floor with all 50 pacifistas. No, what but are you the on about? only so, so, so all the other, other admirals, fine. But the thing is, Vegapunk studied Kizaru, and so if he was working, like he had, he created the Seraphims, he has contingency plans for the Seraphims. You don't think Does he, he? contingency? Yeah, the bubble. What are you talking the, about? The sea bubbles were the contingency on the Seraphims. It didn't, but okay, that isn't a contingency. That, that That's like a, a fix all. Like, a contingency for studying the warlords would be like, oh, Mihawk, ha ha ha, I have like, Off you know, slice-proof skin. Oh, the Kuma Seraphim, well, he can't turn anything tangible around me. Like, that is a contingency against a certain scenario. The, the <laughs> sea bubble thing is, it, it works against any Devilford user. Yeah, but he the does photonic not have any gloves, contingency against the Seraphim. You, you can't, the Photonic Gloves is close to a contingency against But the even with the Photonic Gloves, the, the, the what about a photonic don't suit? put it on. A Photonic Suit? Yeah, Bro, like what Kizaru's if we find out this they're anti- Okay, fifty pacifistas with with this suited up with lightsabers and and photon. Uh, like, okay, they have it, everything. this is just Star Wars now. <laughs> <laughs> and what well, with the bubble shields, the ultimate defense. I don't know. I feel like what did we see them deflect earlier? Was it like we a- saw them deflect a cannonball and bullets? Like they're not <laughs> deflecting Kizaru. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, I, I like to think the light beams could pierce that. <laughs> I and even to... then, I, I'm I'm sure Kizaru's probably awakened too, since we haven't seen any of those yet. Yeah, and he's Ima- one of like the the highest tier logias out there. Imagine we see him, and then he shoots, and then a bubble deflects him. What do you think his response would be? Like you're good at re uh, re re-na- voice acting him. <laughs> Am I? If I if if I was trying to shoot the ship and they blocked a light beam, I just destroy the ship then. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't even care. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. And then I'd just, like, destroy the ship and I- I'd go on with my day. Like, these guys can't swim, right? Oh, man. I want I want, I want, want Kizaru to be more than just, like, visible light. I want him to be, like, crazy. Like, he just, he's just, he's Eam at that point. Like, I don't know how yeah. to stop that. But I definitely want that. I don't think, the, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to backtrack. The past pieces can't do it. I just... I think it would be cool. I think it'd be cool. You think it would be cool if the <laughs> pacifistas beat Kizaru? <laughs> you, that, 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 that's a cool scenario for you? <laughs> if you were writing One Piece, that's how this would go down. I didn't think I'd laugh about a certain part of the chapter more than what happens at the end. But, you know, if we if I could laugh about this for six hours like I did on stream, we were laughing at Kid. Ooh, that'd be a good time. This chapter is full of laughs. That's all I can say. This, cha- this chapter is full of laughs. It's it's truly a joyous pirate. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to bring that up. I was like, you can bring up at the end, but yeah. Well, we'll bring it up that. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we cut over to Elbath. I love the way kids sees the red hair fleet. The guy actually calls him fodder. He says, yo, I'll never pull my punches. Like he's even sweating a little bit. He feels bad that he has to fight Padded Toe Garotini, Grave Tooth Fugar, and Panicky Pudududu. Like these dudes are actual buffoons. Nah, but you I- know what I like? What's up? Killer. He goes, they've got some big names with them. <laughs> Don't lower your guard. Yeah, these are the big names. Like, <laughs> hey, we said it earlier, right? Like Garotini, all these dudes, we are not shown their bounties. For all we know, these could be uh, two billion <clears throat> berry commanders or, or fleet captains. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. And, 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 you know, it wouldn't be the first time someone have rides the coattails of another person, right? Yeah. Like, it could be the moment you're al- allianced with the red-haired pirates, you get, you know, the perks are nobody messes with you. You you get, like, you know, uh, insurance, tax write-offs, like, so much stuff, right? Yeah, and these then, guys are farming on peaceful mode. Yeah, and then, and then the you know, on top of that, the, the downside, everything as a downside is your bounty increases by a billion. Like, I'm sorry, it's just a part of being the part of the crew. Like, Rockstar, the moment he joined the main crew, it went from one billion to two billion. Like, All I gotta say with these guys is that we we didn't see a bounty could be super high and who knows maybe they all have awakened logia devil fruits yeah yeah and they could be yeah. elemental hockey gods they they you know dragon is probably Rumor not acting it. because of these guys yeah <laughs> if they're all Rumor over the new it. world garotini garotini actually has the water water no me the water water no me that would be that would be cracked. Yeah, I I want to know what Garotini oh, wait, 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 is. Wait, 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 one second, one second. 
Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, uh, your camera lagged really bad. Oh. Your, your, okay. your, your camera and audio. Mm. So you, you just cut back up. Okay. Okay. All right. We're talking about the water, water. I, the last thing I said was water, water, no me, and then it froze. Got it. Got it. No, no. Oh, I, so I'll pick up right now. Yeah. Yo, it, even without the water, water, no me, I'm wondering, like, what is he? He can't be a fishman because frogs aren't fish. And then he can't be a mink because they're not mammals. So, like, is there a new race? Like, the, these, these. Hey, the what if this is dots. the, what if this is the tribe that Kuma is? <laughs> <laughs> this is how he's we're revealed to. Frog. It's frog people. Yeah. The hidden village of the frog. Like, he's just, oh my God. He's so spread out. He's not even from the same anime <laughs> manga. <laughs> Added to Garotini, what a name! Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the thing is, like, they, they could be completely <laughs> on, weak, on, right? On OP scans, they translated padded toe to, to ball finger. <laughs> <laughs> Did they? <really? laughs> I was wondering in the live reaction. I just like, you know, if you guys are listening, there's many times where Sai oh, says man. something, I glaze over it, I say something, Sai glaze over they it. They call this man Ball Finger Garotini. Sai came to I the lost stream my mind and That's said, so like, funny. Uh, did you see Ball Finger Garotini? I was like, uh, I think you, ball you know what? There's no so reason much funnier. Come. Dude, what if Ball Finger's actually the right translation? Yeah, though? Viz comes out, yeah. Stephen Paul's <laughs> yep, he this is Ball what, Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh god yeah that's that, good who i you Ooh. know the these these characters are are kind of interesting because the thing oh, is tentadas are actually strong like their base level just like they could just whoop you around and like who knows that we saw what old man energy can do we saw rayleigh we saw whitebeard a lot of old people pack a bunch this guy's losing his teeth <laughs> maybe maybe he's like how is I was he wondering where you're going with that oh, this guy's losing his teeth though did you see this no, no but like like the reason uh, why i bring that out crazy. is is what did we say about uh, uh luffy gear five that that is tune force right being able to pop out. i mean these are his dentures but like hey who knows maybe that's how he lost his original set he has tune force. yeah this but. is retirement home force nice <laughs> i love to see it they got the old man energy and frogs op you know what's funny when I was first reading this chapter and I got to this part, I actually thought these guys were strong. No, like, just, I just I, I thought they were strong. Like we had kid here and then we have like the exclamation mark near him. And I was like, whoa, like, is he being held back by these dudes? And then kid calls him fodder. And it's like, OK. I, no, I gotcha. but when I no, I'm with you because you, that's why I highlighted a killer said because I looked at them and I was like reading them in a serious tone when I was doing the live reaction. I was like <laughs> Captain Ball of the Garotini. Like I had Brave a tooth Fugar. Like, exactly, you know, like that forward <laughs> intonation. So I was like Captain of the Poodle Pirates. I was like Poodle Puddle Puddle Pirates, and then I was like what the? And then I read all of them. Much like, better. Puddle Pirates, so Social Club, Bourgeois. I was like, wait, what the hell are these pirates? Who are these guys? And then I read through, and he's like, what are these jokers? I, oh, they're not anything. But then Killer goes, they got some big names. I was like, okay, maybe maybe I'm just missing the picture here. Yeah. Maybe maybe this guy got tuned for us. Like, he's you got to remember, though, the the scaling from pre-time skip to post-time skip, Grand Line and New World, is so vast that, honestly, I think... This is going to sound blasphemous because when you really think about it, but it makes sense to say that these guys are probably all stronger than Arlong, right? Everybody in the East Blue. These guys probably mopped the floor with them. No, I don't know. I don't like, know. Scaling wise. They, are you might be, they might be Higuma level, bro. They might be Higuma level. <laughs> no, you know, wow. you think these guys are mountain bandits? I think these Not are. Not the these mountain bandit loose. level. These are the bounties that, like, you you pick up, you know what I mean? Like, this is when you're down Oh, on like account. Johnny and Yasoka, like, in the East Blue, like, they're bounty hunting. These are the kind of guys they're going after. Yeah, yeah, because they have inflated bounties for no reason, but it's because red hair. But, like, you just have to, like, live your life very scared for the rest of all of humanity because of what Shanks does later. But, like... <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, but I... I that's blasphemy though if they're stronger than our this i mean it just uh, comes on and ends luffy in in east blue this and the social club pirates says. <laughs> social club they're all like reading books they're all like paraplegic on strollers like at and they least just beat our law. Every captain has conquerors hockey, right? Imagine that and they just like look at you and you die. Like that's how strong oh, these man. guys are. Imagine Padito Garotini comes up in like 
Uh, you're a shark in a puddle, aren't you, Arlong? And it just slaps him with his ball fingers. <laughs> you know what would be crazy? If Shanks had so much Conqueror's hockey and he could, like, gift it to people. He could be like, here, I'm... Oh, like, everybody like has a Naruto to re- cloak. Like, but, like, they have to, like, refill on it. So, like, he bestows upon them Conqueror's hockey and then they can go out and just, like, have his protection. So, like, kind of like Big Mom's Viva card to her homies. You know, like, they yeah. were like, oh! And then, and then, like, you know, like, when uh, Kaido looked at Zoro one time and he's just like... Is that is that Odin? And he like saw Odin's image. Like yeah, they look saw... at these guys and they see Shanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they're like, oh, they like put their hands up like Aramaki and shit. Like that be so. Do you think Arlong would actually fight Gertini, or do you think he would invite Gertini to the crew because he's almost like a fishman? Since we're off topic, I I, I gotta know now. What's what's your opinion? I feel like Arlong would welcome Gertini to the club. Yeah, you know what? I I think like. You know what? Maybe he would. Maybe he would. I think. I think you're right because he's he's probably green. He's close. That's closer to blue. Um, he can um, probably swim, right? The puddle pirates. You don't get that name for no reason. Frogs. They're not the best swimmers, right? But they but, can. They they can like frog stroke. Yeah, they could. They could. They could surface. But you know, deep yeah. sea. You know, like and and maybe maybe that's Yokozuna test. could. Uh, he could. He could swim. Yokozuna. The but frog from actual... Water Seven. Oh yeah, but yeah, I guess I guess you're right. You know, you're right. You're right. I, he could swim, and that could be Arlong's test. Like for other species, he dunks them in water, and like, <laughs> can you survive? <laughs> That'd be crazy. But you know what? It, this guy is stronger than Arlong. I, I'm with that. <laughs> you're with it. You're with the agenda. <laughs> I'm with the agenda. These guys end as East Blue Saga. This be crazy. All three of these dudes combined could probably like solo the East Blue Saga. Maybe <laughs> even the Grand Line. Who knows, man? Who knows? Smoker, smoker. St- oh no, get <laughs> It's He's the ball back. fingers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's ball fingers. He's here. <laughs> He's Yikes. back. What are you doing in this in this sea? Oh no. <laughs> You're a frog in a well, white uh, hunter. Yo, it's like when when uh when when uh Mihawk shows up and everyone's like, what is he doing here? You know what I mean? Get yeah. <laughs> Everybody's sweating. They're like, oh my god, it's ball fingers. <laughs> Everybody get away quick. Hide oh, your family. God. Oh, God. Yeah, I was, you so, know, I don't trust Kid at anything. So when Killer said big names, I wanted to trust it. But then I wanted to trust it, too. I was like, yeah. yo, like, you know, Kid and Killer are fighting some really strong people, but not really the case. At least, so, oh, you know, what was good, though? Oda up? closed uh, in the speculation here. So like and, and in the best way possible, I think that was probably one of my fun favorite favorite personal favorite panels was when the entire fleet was laughing at themselves that was like <laughs> such a funny thing to me <laughs> <laughs> they're literally laughing at how weak they are yeah. and we learned that they're notoriously weak the one that, of the weakest yonko crews out there like I, the way i saw it, it i remember in my live reactions there's so many thoughts i don't say out loud believe it or not despite if you watch my live reactions like you're holding back one of the thoughts i had was like it felt to me that it was like so, uh, like shanks is a billionaire or, or like we were talking about adam sandler the other time where like uh, mr deeds at the end of the movie his entire like hometown all has like ferraris and lambos and they're just like <laughs> messing shit up like <laughs> like i thought about like a billionaire who just has a bunch of stupid idiots with them but they're like ballers and you know what i mean and that's what that reminded me of. <laughs> that's what this is <laughs> i mean they even talk about like one of their members just about a croak in age like someone is so old they're like hey just watch your own health like don't even worry about fighting kid man did you get time to look at the raws for that uh for if it says ca- a father time I know I want to oh, wait no, for this, no. but I want to know so bad if that actually says father time. Because to me, if the TCB uh, translated that part as the only enemy we have, uh, you have is father time. And that's in a panel where like Shanks is leaving on a ship. And I'm like, is that like a, is that like a crazy foreshadow box? Like, and obviously a translation, we got to wait for it. But when they said father time, father time is Cronus, Saturn that's what saturn is so saint saturn i would refer to that and that could imply that like shanks could die to saint saturn in my opinion if we're foreshadowing it like that at least you know um in such a light way i'll be interested to see though so onwards though we see shanks hop on the ship right Mm -hmm. and then we got the red-haired crew just casually moving furniture around 
moving furniture, laughing a little bit, talking about Blackbeard. These guys are chilling. This is the social club, really. Like, the more I look at this, I'm like, maybe Shanks is the social club leader. Because uh, these guys are hanging out. Uh, you know, it's funny. I What's it, up? When you put it like that, right? Like, Shanks is this guy that just doesn't care. And I yeah. thought that the fleet was going to be like Luffy's, where Luffy's, they all sign up to like uh to, to be under luffy despite luffy not necessarily wanting that he doesn't care right and i thought that would be like what shanks is but now that we know that they're actually weak it's kind of like the opposite it has to be the opposite right like these, oh yeah like these like te what like one dollar pirates aren't asking like shanks can we join your fleet no shanks is probably like meeting really cool people that he just likes and he's just like hey do you want to chill in the new world and like he like pats him on the back and gives him his flag yeah, yeah, and he's just he he goes out of his way to like here's here's a flag for you. You you are a good bar. <laughs> you deserve it, man. Ball yeah. fingers. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, like the ultimate good thing. Because I also just realized like surely he's not finding these people in the new world. Like most of these people probably are. Like in he the is. World. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. I, but then... I feel like I feel like Yonko crews are normally established in the new world. No, but but no 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 Shanks himself or like right fleets. like. But, like, you know, Whitebeard's crew could be all over, right? Like, their territories are all over. What I'm oh, saying yeah. about Shanks oh. is, like, when he was in the East Blue or when he maybe went back to West Blue and all those things, he probably, oh, like, gotcha, picked gotcha. up people that were, like, oh, I wish I could go to the Grand Line to the New World. You know, like, how those pirates are. But that's too scary. That's way too hard. And, like, Shanks is out in some random bar. And he's, like, oh, you say you want to go to the Grand Line, eh? And then he just, like, hands them a flag. Just like he handed Luffy a straw hat. But, like, you know, everyone else is much older. So he's, like, I'm not going to give. I only have one straw hat. So he gave out These a bunch people of flags probably don't have a lot of ambition when you really think about it right since they yeah, joined they're just, shanks they're just they're uh, just they're just kind of chilling chillin'. yeah because like yeah. I, I don't feel like shanks would ever recruit somebody who's like oh i want to find the one piece right like yeah. it's like hiring a competitor no exactly so, yeah, all exactly. these guys are literally chilling like yeah they have like random dreams like maybe Giratini wants to find the all blue for all we know well when you think about it right what what we see is interesting because on top of everything shanks is demonstrating before everything just how powerful he is we knew i mean the not even him his crew yeah yeah like, his the, crew, the red hair like, crew like like i said they're moving furniture lucky rules like hey don't sweat it we can handle this like nobody here feels threatened by kid yeah and then which and is kind of crazy on top of that it's like these weakling pirates are that protected that they survive in the new world just on name alone and when you think about it shanks is like the, the the ultimate passport the visa right like so when it comes to these guys dreams they're probably just like i want to see like the world like i want to see the grand line i want to see islands and not necessarily like i want to be the pirate king right these are just dudes that uh, shanks is like hey here's a visa you know you can make it to any island but then any again place. They, they could kind of do this as just like a random explorer but i guess they wouldn't have the safe passage because the marines would I be like saying them what well if yeah. they're an explorer probably not right no it's everybody because you need it to be in the grand line you have to have permission from the world uh, world government if you're outside and then to sail within the grand line you also need to be uh, uh world government approved that's why the kingdoms that are aligned are able to sail the ships but everybody else anybody who sails away is essentially a what pirate. we need we need a two-piece story where instead of a pirate we're just a random civilian it'd be so different because then imagine being moda Imagine loading up in the loose. Oh no, exactly, right? Like you're just a civilian and then every other day your your town gets attacked by pirates. No, and then you get lasered off the island and you just don't remember anything. Or not. No, remember, that's her don't. fault. Well, Lucia probably did something to anger the world government. We don't know yet. Yeah, but where you at fault, you just loaded in. Well, yeah. I guess it's our fault then, right? <laughs> you just <laughs> I, I, Hey, I'm not an advocate for Moda. I never really cared for her. <laughs> Hey, hey, she's the closest character to Oda, just one M apart. <laughs> Moda and Oda, yeah. That, that's his female insert. No, I Speaking mean, of his male insert, female. though, Shanks. Yeah, yeah Shanks is, uh, what the, what, what is it? Shanks is the character that Oda says is most like him. But then again, I feel like that's, that's kind of blown up a little bit, right? Like, if I was writing a story, I would write the most badass character, and I'd be like, yeah, this is me. <laughs> no, no, you, you know what? I, like, I, I feel like everybody does that. So, so this might be the point where we say we uh, we recorded a version of this before, and uh, your members have access to that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so sign up for that if you want to see the pre-version. I think we talked about this, where 
um even by the end of the chapter obviously spoilers what happens in the chapter right like if oda truly is shanks and i've talked about this before oda like the mangaka industry is crazy super competitive like people get knocked out deleted ill sick die crazy stuff and, so and you, you, what you're trying to say is the fleet are the other mangakas out there that oda is just supports because they just want to write manga and he's just like hey this is goofy and cool i like you and then he gets them in you know what i mean they get to you put know out what? Their goofy i could see stuff. that and then Kid is the the mangaka that like wanted to be Oda. He came into thing. I'm gonna take your throne and just came at Oda for no reason. Like kept on trying to take jabs at Oda. And then this is what Oda did later on. The second jab he just was writes all it him took. off. I yeah. can't wait till in a future SBS Oda's like, yeah. By the way, Kid is based off of an old colleague of mine that we had a falling out with. <laughs> <laughs> imagine he says that like he just drops that yeah, just straight yeah, flames think, a guy in an sbs i uh, maybe we, this Yikes. is a reoccurring thing because i think we talked about buggy in that light in a previous yeah thing. buggy is based off of oda's childhood or best friend or something like yeah, that he said that in like some interview very early on and um and so that would be interesting because when you look at buggy he's a character that was allowed to just do whatever they want and he kind of has plot armor like he just keeps on going and going dude and and it's not even with shanks shanks has no involvement in that buggy is literally just existing and winning right he's just he was in the east blue and he was the the craziest baddest someone t t told me in, in a comment that the anime introduced buggy as the immortal through nami nami said yeah. oh this is buggy the immortal, buggy the immortal yeah so i don't know if that's in the manga but i'm definitely gonna check that out for a future video the point being i think though, they do call him that in the manga too and that's that's just because he can get his head ch chopped yeah, off yeah 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 and so with with like uh buggy right he goes in the grand line boost it up goes into the new world boost it up yanko he just exists right like and all I was because saying, he's based off of oda's friend <laughs> And who is Oda's friend? Like, I wonder if there's a mangaka that has an exact same situation as him, except makes their entire anime 95% filler and has 30 movies because of the 30 years that they It could be Gintama, up. honestly. We know they have yeah. a good relationship. That too. There's so, like, I, 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 there might be one that you, you can know, figure Oda out. You know, needs this to drop buggy. the sauce by the end. Like, where was he inspired for some of these characters? Yeah, I think you know it, know it's either either Gintama or 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 Detective Conan because one or the other, you know. I don't. Did he tell Gintama's uh, author the end of one, the story? Oh, I don't maybe know. maybe that would be better if he didn't tell that person the end of the One Piece thing because that'd be like Buggy and Shanks. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait till Shanks sees Buggy's fleet. I wonder what Shanks thinks about that. Like, like, imagine he sees Buggy rolling up and he's got Mihawk, Crocodile, Impel Down Escape. He's like, I guess he doesn't have giants anymore because Hutter didn't join the Straw Hat fleet. But I don't know. I feel like Buggy's a menace. Yeah, no, I think. I, I can't wait to see what they have to say about that. When you said that, like, they met at Marineford, right? But like, yeah. I felt like I just got like a hiccup in my heart. Like it was just kind of like, oh, that that sounds kind of sick. Like a buggy Shanks like meet off. I think Shanks I think would be happy. By the end of the story, they need to team up. A hundred percent. They're so yeah. going to team up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I the way I see Shanks is he loves buggy. Like he has this love for him, right? He didn't he skipped out on Laugh Tales. Honestly, if somebody hurt buggy, I actually think shanks might be offended and he will get revenge as if he was part of his fleet yeah 100 percent. i that, I, feel, I feel like he would i i that's what i'm saying with like uh you know i think Bu shanks is gonna get hurt or killed because of buggy because i think blackbeard is gonna end up hurting buggy that's gonna you know we saw one vein here from shanks in this chapter i think aramaki we saw two veins shanks is gonna get the three veins for the three scars and and it's over like is, it's a cabin brother bro like he he kind of grew up with buggy in yeah, a way people, people i shanks guys, didn't go to laugh tail for buggy like bro yeah like, exactly they are the homeboys like that's shanks that's would so look die. out for him yeah like I, I wouldn't be surprised if like shanks was in the east blue just to like keep an eye on buggy you know what i mean like <laughs> just to like what if shanks was there to eliminate all the threats that could have killed buggy so buggy could like be happy in the east blue right the like, one the one plot hole we have with that though is that when shanks sees whitebeard whitebeard said hey what about that guy with the red nose you're always with and then shanks says oh buggy i think he's a pirate in the east blue so it sounds like Shanks hasn't been keeping tabs True. on him, but but, no, but, but now no, that Buggy's here though, now that Buggy's in the new world, like, maybe it's no, different. No, 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 maybe no, 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 no,
it, what happens right on the page that we're on in the chapter. He has intel. He has a like a Fed on intel. his team. He, like he's, he, he's, he's got the whole. He's got the Hongo hole, bro. Like this guy kid, knows everything. Kid just showed up. By the way, like let's let's keep in mind. Kid just showed up, and this dude just like. Yeah, here's his entire life story, by the way. Yeah, he didn't need to like, gather that. It's like that. your teacher asked you for an essay and you, you use chat GPT. It cooked <laughs> it up real quick. This dude is either like the, this is, like we are sleeping on this dude's observation hockey. You know what I mean? Like if this guy just on the spot made this, like he can like He's got see intel in, hockey. Yeah, he has like past, like, you know, we're talking about future site. This guy has past site. He has like whatever <laughs> that's called. <laughs> like, he, he looked up the car facts for kid. No, like, and then the way he uses that in battle, instead of like, he like doesn't beat them, he breaks them down with their childhood trauma. Like, you can, you can see oh that. Oh my far god. Because <laughs> apparently Shanks read something about kid here, right? Like, something. Yeah, he read something. Like, but the only notable thing he says is, oh, he's from the South Blue. And that's that's really it. Like nothing else. Just like oh, he's from the South Blue. It ain't ain't that something? He's but he sure? does say that he's been rampaging a lot. He's been causing some damage here and there. So that kind of puts Shanks on guard. But even then, it's like I was. I kind of hoped he dropped more lore for Kid. Yeah. Like oh, you know, Kid. He knows this guy. Kid grew up over here, and you know, he knows he has these connections. Nah. Biggest biggest attribute. He's from the South Blue. Yeah, it's interesting. But what's crazy? Hey, what's up? Like. I, I, I wonder if this is something that, if it's, like, is that why Oda revealed it in SBS? Because that might be what, like, Shanks is reading. <laughs> like, Shanks is reading the SBS? Like, like that, yeah, the, that that's the information we imply. And then, so, the reason why I say that is, sometimes the anime, I feel like, might add some extra context and that could be the context that they add right like shanks here's like there's a oh few this is lines. where we get the animated kid kid flashback yeah yeah of, or of the like, story we already know from the sps yeah i feel like sometimes they add lines and it's like it's not exactly wrong but it's like that wasn't said in the manga but it's right like they just like took it from some canon source i guess right so yeah so going past the shanks portion we see kid back on screen and yep. he says that he's gonna blast all these ships down in 10 seconds flat. He whips out his awakened uh, attack here, the damn punk, the rail gun. And then he, you know, Shanks sees it. He sees into the future, a whole 10, maybe even 12 seconds ahead, because obviously Kid has to fire the rail gun and hit the ship. So, you know, th this could be even 12 seconds right here that Shanks is looking into. He yep. tells Dorian Braga to get ready. And then we see in Shanks' future sight that all the ships go down, all of his friends are burning, we have people being split in half, and Shanks gets pretty upset. Like you said, we got the veins popping even. Yeah. And then he goes in, flies across all the way from Elbaf and his ship to Kid, and he just slaps him with the Divine Departure. It's an actual one-tap. We yep. see people on board losing consciousness before the attack is even landed killer tries to cover for him tries to block it off bend it off but he just ends up unconscious on the floor too it is something i i feel bad for kid because uh i did think that he would at least land one hit i thought that he might have mastered conqueror's hockey to some extent maybe even rio you know he, he, he witnessed loopy use it on wano maybe he was going to use it a little bit too you know, maybe the foreshadowed Conqueror's Hockey would kick in. Nothing. We got no new feats from Kit. Actually, I guess it kind of is a feat, right? Because he blasts multiple ships in a future, in a future sight vision. Mm -hmm. So there is kind of something there for Kid. But even then, to not land a singular blow on Shanks, to even do anything to him, just to try to stop this, he'd even try to block this attack. And he's done what are your what are your thoughts on this i need someone to pixel scale I, I i don't know why i was thinking of all the things that i would use to enter into this conversation and i landed on i need someone to pixel scale how far kids ship was from elbaf because when they were from when shanks is done with them dory and brogy are still silhouetted so when they get div uh, you know essentially rocked later on which we'll get to um they they just got blasted by really powerful winds for all they know right dory and brogy were basically as silhouetted as like the shadows at the end of thriller bark to them they don't know what the fuck happened to them and so 
shanks within 10 seconds gives like casually like is walking up this deck and then and then he tells dorian brogy to load up right he jumps up then and sees the future right and then so that's 10 seconds span even less now he jumps from elbaf to kids ship bro is a bullet a singular jump from what it looks like right this could be skywalk for all we know he could have taken a couple of steps but either way to make it all the way to kid in less than 10 seconds that's just wild yeah, like at this point, maybe Douglas Bullet is a non-canon character, and Shanks wait, 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 is wait, wait, wait. is Bullet. Let, let's have a conversation real quick. Uh huh. Are, are you ready? Yes. This is bad. Dory Broggy, get in position. It's it's about to do some serious damage. <laughs> and then I talk to Ben Beckman for a little bit, and then I say, as expected. Like, we have to imagine he jumped after having this conversation. So he might have made it to Kid in less than two seconds, really. Because this, like, he talked to multiple, he talked to three different people. Dory Broggy, the Red Hair Fleet, and Ben Beckman. He fit three conversations in the 10 seconds, and then he jumped. I so he actually made it to Kid in one or two seconds. Like, that is insane. I'm remembering, like, the thing is- I didn't I even like, think about that till just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, then, fit and in, he fit in convos, bro. He, <laughs> he sent text messages before he did this. I he had like, 10 seconds on the and clock then like future site like we see katakuri has to like process the future site too so like shanks has to process this for a little bit right like he saw well into the future too because like uh, you know he saw people getting cut in half bro yeah yeah like like and, and, and not just that he saw multiple bullets right like we haven't seen kid like fire multiple laser beams what does that even mean that happened here and so i like when I put that into context, I remembered the live stream because I genuinely thought, I mean, keep in mind, guys, I was sober. I was like, is King here? He looked, he looked like a Lunarian in front of, in front of Kid. He's flying, bro. Like, and, and I, then, I think we mentioned it as a joke, but like, this got to be like some bird zoning. Like, you see how he's just <laughs> yeah. flying over here? Pell was talking That's about wicked. him. Pell was saying five <laughs> devil fruits. It was foreshadowed Shanks. since Alabasta. Shanks can fly confirmed. <laughs> Yo, that's and, wicked and like no wonder how we stopped kaido like we were all like oh yeah, yeah oh yeah. wait 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 what what was it um sengoku was like hey red hair had a run-in with kaido in the new world yeah. how did he make it here what if the red-haired ship wasn't even in the new world and it was already near marine ford <laughs> and it was just shanks <laughs> flying like that, that could honestly be a possibility because no. imagine Kaido and King were the only two on their way to Marine Ford, and they can both fly. Mm -hmm. Imagine they're flying, and then they run into Shanks in the sky. Like Shanks is actually <laughs> chilling in the run. sky. <laughs> they mistake him for a dragon, bro. They're like, "Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Superman." Like this. Guy. Kaido uses Future Sight, and he sees King gets one tap, and he's like, "Oh, maybe we shouldn't do this, King. I should have left you home." <laughs> he's like, "He's just no, 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 no. It's not even that. How funny would it be? Oh my God. Oh What's my up? God." Kaido didn't leave. Kaido, he said they got they were about to leave, but Shanks Wi-Fi hockeyed his ass to sit back down. <laughs> like that's I mean, how honestly, that could have happened. We don't know. We don't have any insights on the what the Shanks and Kaido King fight. So for Even all we crazier. know, he could have just sent the Wi-Fi hockey his way, and then Even, that was the quote unquote run in they had. The crate. No, no, no. This. The, let me tie. What am I here for? Making connections. All right, let me tie it all together, guys. He didn't even fly no no no. he wi fi hockey from marine ford okay <laughs> that's all how he the way stopped from him. there and you're asking wait he was at marine ford the whole time he's called the observation hockey killer for a reason right he snuck into the gorse room he was there and nobody noticed until he just was in the right spot the right time that's why I co like he just appeared in front of a kainu he was standing there he he predicted the entire events and stood in the right place the entire time just invis that'd be crazy I mean, Shanks is a, a man of many feats. That's that's all I can say. I mean, even the Divine Departure thing is kind of wild, too. Like, like this I, is Roger's attack, bro. You said... you said This, this um, guy's mimicking the Pirate King right now. 
you said like you know he jumped and i was like do we know that he jumped right because he just appeared and then i remember no oda showed us he jumped but then i look back at the panel it literally looked like he turned into like a napkin like a blur frame in like a in an anime like that's how fast he moved that oda didn't even want to draw him in a manga panel like jumping instead no, he just that, him as that, a that's the view from kids perspective <laughs> Like he he was literally a silhouette that turned into Shanks. Yeah, he, he, he like he literally just looks like a napkin. He looks like a coffee stain in this manga thing. Like you know, all I gotta say is that if Kid went out, I'm glad it was to a move that the Pirate King used. Right? Yeah, like yeah. it, it could have been. Imagine if this attack wasn't named. <laughs> right, like that that would have been a cursed future. <laughs> So no, I, I'm, I'm glad it's at least a bloodlusted, vein popping pirate king attack. With Conqueror's hockey so strong, we had really strong members over here passing out. It's crazy the way you said that because I just it like opened a whole new door of disrespect that Oda could have done. Because yeah. like when you if sit Oda back, really hated Kid, he could have made this worse. Yeah, yeah. Because when it, you sit it back, like been worse. all the memes about Captain Mid being amplified by this, I'm I'm like no, like. At 99.9, if not everybody, this is what would happen to them. Like, I don't know how you stop this. Like, like Kaido could maybe survive a few of these, but like, like do if he's you, okay, jumping do you think from Law would survive this? No. No. Absolutely. Law wouldn't survive this. Honestly, Zoro probably wouldn't survive <laughs> this. Like, Luffy might not even. Eh, I think I, I'd give Luffy a pass because of Gear Fifth. But, but if he doesn't see it coming, like. You know, like base form Luffy gets hit by this. Like he he sees a napkin in the distance. Base form Luffy, not gear fit, so he can't you know rubberize the blow. Like what would happen? Like I don't this is a powerful attack. Would survive this. I don't think gear five would survive that either. Like I I I'm memeing a little bit, but here I just revisited so many uh videos in the time that we recorded this where it's like I look back at like the railgun moment. Like that was something I said would happen. I and I went back and listen to what I, I I sounded like. And I was positioning this as a kid W. He pulls out the railgun, he fires the at the ships. That would be a W for kid and he would get Shanks angry enough to fight him. And and like I didn't fathom the anger, right? I did not fathom like how far Shanks is looking like Luffy, if you killed Usopp or something, <laughs> which I mean, essentially, Kid did right in in oh, the future side. Like, like Kid, kid actually kills like dude. Padded Toe, Get Rotini, Dentures Fugar. Like, in a way, he he enacted the what boss rage mode. The, yeah. the chaos timer was ticking. And and like I think about this because look what happened to Aramaki, right? He, we now understand. Listen, I don't know where you are. I don't want to know where you are. I don't want the smoke. I mean, honestly, <laughs> with how crazy the jump Shanks can make, Shanks might as well have been right behind Aramaki. <laughs> like oh, like Greenville did the right thing. He was about to get his his butt whooped, bro. Like, no, yeah, it, it's it's just bad. Yeah, so like, and, and that, there's not like, a lot of people that could survive. Like, honestly, replace Kid with Admiral Greenbull. Exactly. Is Admiral Greenbull tanking this? No. It, like, it, it looks bad for Kid because it is a one tap. But when you put this on paper, I, I'm gonna make a video about this because I think it's such a great meme. But I want to talk about the amount of characters that could actually survive yes, this exactly. attack. Exactly. Can I be on that video? What the hell? That ex <laughs> I'm on. I agree. It's nobody surviving this. I don't like, know why Shanks like, exists I, right now. Like Gear Fifth Luffy, maybe because he's an Awakened Zoan, he recovers, right? Luffy, yeah, he could probably get back up. Kaido, I think Kaido could take maybe two or three of these, and then it, it might be lights out for a little bit, right? Like Big Mom, like I, I, I don't even know, like how many characters could genuinely take this, and how many attacks? Like if Shanks had free reign, if, if Shanks is one of those characters where. Have you ever seen those animes where like a main villain or something's like, oh, I'm gonna sit right here. You know how like Anel did in Skypea? He said, mm -hmm. um, hey, I'll give you five minutes to kill me. And he literally sits there while people try to stab him. That if if anybody gave Shanks that opportunity, one minute of free attacks from Shanks, nobody would survive. <laughs> literally nobody. Blackbeard, Luffy, Kaido, Big Mom. If you had to get hit by Divine Departure multiple times, it's GG. 
Yeah, yeah. Let and, alone just one. And let alone like trying to run from it. You're not running from this and guy. And bloodlusted. Right? Like, like, dude, you act. You killed his Nakama. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's like if it's somebody not even killed, you killed him. No, it's a thought crime. You don't. You just gotta think it, bro. Yeah. You gotta have ten seconds. You, you, you if it's enter your brain, uh, imagine. Like, like you're not dude. gonna see your how, your last moments. And I, like I said, I don't think this is his final attack. Like, this isn't Shanks' ultimate move that he's whipping out. This yeah. might be top tier. Like, I think this is, like, top five Shanks attacks, right? This it, is it his probably evolves or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But this here's the thing. This is Luffy's Gomu Gomu uh, rifle. This is his signature. Here, here's the thing. If Luffy used Future Sight and he saw somebody cut Nami in half, you know, cut off Usopp's nose, break Sanji's legs, Luffy would probably whip out Gear Fifth and use one of his biggest attacks on you. Like, like yeah, he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't build up. He wouldn't say, "Oh, Gear Second, yeah. Gear Third. Like, he would go Gear Fifth and use a really strong attack. Yeah, that's kind of what I equate this to. Yeah, except... So while it looks bad for Kid, uh, I, I think there are a lot of things that look good for him. Yeah, so what I will say to a little bit of a counter, though, is it what you just described says a lot, right? If the person doing that, like if Luffy went gear five and there was a person that was harming his Nakama, but they weren't strong because Kid Shanks knows Kid's not strong, right? And so I think the power gap is so much that Shanks did not even need to do this. He could have went there and dismantled all of them it, b without hurting them. You know what I mean? Like, or, or just yeah. like stopping Kid, right? Put his cannon up. He, this is intentional. Like, kid, like Shanks is for one reason or another, whether it's the build Kid up, which is like, I hear that a lot more right now. And, um, or on the flip side, like he really just wanted to take him out. It's like, this is an intentional choice. Like when you give someone this, this much of a power gap, like uh, restraint is is possible if you want to, it to be there, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he wants to it's, do something to get here. It's interesting too, because with this attack and having Shanks one tap a guy worth 3 billion berries, at one point, it's like, oh, you know, One Piece is ending, all these fights are wrapping up, the characters are dwindling down. But on another hand, I'm like, wait a minute, the ceiling just got raised. Yes. We thought Luffy was, like, near the top? No. Yes, I, yes. Like, Luffy, like, if Luffy were fighting Kid, I don't think Luffy could one-tap Kid. So I think with this attack, it has raised the ceiling of One Piece scaling. To where I think the series actually has a longer life now in a in a weird way. 1, and even with the ending narrator box with like, you know, oh, the kid parts have been annihilated, blah, blah, blah. And we're all kind of memeing like, is kid going to come back from this? I, I think he does. I don't think he's going to be a main player. I don't think Luffy is going to look at kid and say, oh, no, this guy's going to get to laugh tail. Like, I don't think kid's going to be huge in the story. But yeah. will he build back up? I think so. I, I don't think kid is actually dead. I know by the end of the chapter, looking pretty bad. He's drowning. Him, killer, devil fruits. Not looking too good. But I do think somebody will save them. And I don't think he's going to get a two-year time skip, but I think he will get a mini training arc for what it's worth. Because, you know, to be fair, there might not be a lot of One Piece time left in this story before Luffy gets to the One Piece. But I think they will get some upgrade. I mean, eventually, unless Oda really hates Kid and it is like, named and based off of his arch rival i feel like kid will shot that conquers hockey eventually I, yeah. I i feel like it's in the books but this chapter definitely does not look good for him but but, but there's things to take away here in my opinion at least this is like even though i didn't see this level of like kid i thought maybe one hit i didn't think it'd be that massive but when you really recontextualize that analogy that's what you're describing, right? Like Luffy's not surviving multiples of these, even in Gear Five. Like, it, like he probably fare better than Kid, maybe three more hits. But Shanks in this chapter is like, he's number one. He's probably the strongest character we have. Strongest human, right? Like maybe yeah. Blackbeard's not human and Eames not human, but I, I you know what? Hey, just... what, what did Zoro say to the Mihawk Seraphim? Like, I don't even think you're more human than he is. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Shanks... I mean, that, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, uh, man, Shanks is. Ah, oh, this chapter is so. Sick. And you know what's funny too? We just talked about how many people could take this hit. We got to think back to the one person who apparently clashed with Shanks, and that's freaking Mihawk. 
Yeah. Like, what does it say about Mihawk? Mihawk is insane. Insane. And, like, I've always said that Shanks is stronger than Mihawk, but people think, like, that means Mihawk is, like, below nothing. No, it, it could be extreme diff. Like, but Shanks wins. Like, that's how yeah. I see it. But, like, if Luffy were to fight Zoro, it would be an extreme diff fight. I would imagine. I don't know. Gear 5th versus, uh, versus Zoro, Enma Zoro. Yeah. Like, Zoro is, has, like, a lot of uh, advantages uh, given his fighting style, right? Like, yeah. just offered advantages. But, yeah, Luffy's going to beat Zoro by the end of it, right? Like, even yeah. if like Luffy would... The thing is about Shanks is Shanks uses his sword well, but, like, Luffy could just hold a sword and then not use it. And then, like, in Gear 5, it just does some crazy-ass shit now, right? Like, just because he thinks about it. Like, the thing is, I want to see what Gear 5 Luffy does with the Nidai because, like, clearly the way he thought he was using it... And and what was actually happening was not matching up. But with Gear Five, he could do. He if he thinks lasers are coming out, apparently that's what can happen, right? Like we don't know. And it's like, how do you beat that, right? Like, and you know, I think Shanks is just like gonna be this absurd boogeyman, which he feels like. Like he's literally the boogeyman. Like that's why nobody touches the red-haired pirates. Because if you ever heard the story of the Flying Dutchman and it's Shanks, like yeah, I'm not touching even the frog dude, the guy whose dentures are out. Where I'm good, you can. Watch Walk on me, dog. Like I'm not. And then imagine to get in front of Mihawk you. called Shanks a has been, bro. <laughs> Mihawk calls Shanks a has been. Yeah. And then here, here's the thing: people are like, "Oh, Mihawk, you know, you struggled against Vista. He could barely take a YC five. And it's like, could any like imagine some other character walked up to Shanks and called him a has been? What do you think would happen? <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's it's a hard. One. I don't think anybody else really has that privilege. Yeah, I, like I, I said, I, I don't think Mihawk is stronger, but to say that Mihawk is like super weak when apparently he clashed with Shanks, like kind of blasphemous. Yeah, and and Hidden Island actually put out a video of very the beginning half was and that analyzing that uh, discussion, and like I'm I'm with them. It's like Mihawk is strong, very strong. Like, saying he's weaker than Shanks is not an insult to him. Like, if anything, yeah. it's like, it's like being number two to Shanks, cool. Like, I, yeah. I'm number two. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Ima yeah, imagine imagine looking at the Straw Hats and you're like, oh, Par, if you were a Straw Hat, you'd be Zoro. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, dope. <laughs> thank, <yeah. laughs> thank you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, goodness gracious. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like I, I don't think, you know, I don't really care who's stronger or weaker because at the end of the day, whether Shanks is stronger, whether Mihawk is stronger, it doesn't matter. They're at that tier. Yeah. And, and like, you know like what? they're at that realm. They're if like Mihawk gods, truly, essentially. If Mihawk truly doesn't have Conqueror's hockey, then that's like, you know, that could be a reason why like Mihawk is weaker too. It's like that's a hockey diff. That's unfortunate, but Mihawk doesn't have He was ambition just born like that. without Conqueror's. You know what? But, I, he doesn't I have hope ambition. There is. He's sitting with an island of the I, baboons, right? Like, I hope there is a top tier character that's strength is akin to shanks out there in the world who doesn't have conquerors hockey mihawk. it's me well yeah I... well mihawk we, we don't we don't know if he has it or not yet because oda just hasn't said it or and, and we haven't really seen him fight but yeah i feel like there does need to be at least one character without conquerors hockey up that love at that level yeah, like, I, and we, I, Ben Beck, when we know, and, and, you know, to the people who say, like, I don't think Mihawk has conquers. No, I, I always felt Mihawk had conquers, but ever, because I have a lot of Mihawk related videos, Mihawk is a sword. He conquered the realm of swordsmen, so. Yeah, yeah, he's a conqueror. I feel like it would make it, sense if he does have conquers. It does, hockey. exactly. It does make sense. It's just we haven't had it confirmed, and it's so interesting to me, because, like, Zoro didn't know necessarily a lot about conquerors, right? Like, surely yeah. if, like, Mihawk knew about conquerors, or, or could show it like Rayleigh did and, and use it like Zoro would know about like advanced conquerors at minimum because like Luffy had the leg up because he could like he knew about conquerors from the get right he like knew of conquerors like so like Zoro's like ah I wouldn't ask of anything other than my captain right and it's like maybe that was like a slight jab at Mihawk is like you don't have conquerors and then Mihawk's like neither do you and then like Zoro like awakens it later and he's like damn I don't know what this is but this is cool now yeah so it, it is interesting it, it, it's so interesting i think and it'd be thing a good with, thing like, too people who think it... that mihawk is like yc5 because of vista because people bring up marine Ford, which in general has really scuffed scaling in the first place yeah but it's like yo if zoro is stronger than mihawk right now wouldn't he just like become the world's strongest swordsman yeah like currently yeah yeah yeah, yeah like his dream yeah. would be over 
yeah it, it like there'd it, be like no reason to get i mean i guess there would but like he wouldn't necessarily have to get stronger he'd just be like oh guys hey peace out i can beat mihawk now yeah uh, I think, give, give me like a day or two i'll be i'll be back i think when it comes to like the the term swordsman right like when he says a one arms ha armed has been he like looks at shanks and it's like he had a higher potential right like yeah because he had a different thing as a swordsman right i think there's a certain part of mihawk that entertains swordsmanship over fighting right look what he did to zoro he no diffed him with a kitchen knife right like that could be what he did to vista and just wasn't going he just enjoyed the sword play whereas like you're like oh but he went all out against luffy or whatever he, he flies eyes break luffy's not a swordsman he doesn't give a shit about uh, about luffy and him fighting him because that has nothing to do with swordsmen but like with other swordsmen it's common that you like you know you entertain that a lot more uh versus outsiders to to a certain sport you know what i mean so like hey i wouldn't be surprised if that's what that was on on marineford because like marineford i think about it especially now marine, marine mihawk probably hated being there considering he was the ma marine hunter right like he joined the <laughs> warlord for safety. he's the marine hunter helping marines and yeah. The thing with the no scaling to... is that we saw. Did we even see Whitebeard use Conqueror's Hockey once during Marine Ford? I think. I think in the manga, people have theorized. Uh, the power scalers have theorized this. This isn't exactly. I didn't because see, like, a theory Whitebeard was flexing it. that with Roger in the in the Prime days. They said that he tried at one point and he coughed up blood. It was like the moment right before he would have activated and it yeah. stressed him out. He's too old. So that's like, you know, it was not confirmed, I don't think, but like, it's like, that makes a lot of sense, right? Like, dude was dying. It's yeah. incredible that he did what he did. Yeah, and, I, you know I think funny? Marine Forward is just not good with power scaling in general. And, and and that's not Oda's fault. I think it's just the times. I, I like, Marine Forward is like a product of its era. Like, I think uh, hockey wasn't fully established yet. We didn't really have any way of seeing it. Even when people used hockey against Logias, it didn't hit them it just kind of like was a nuisance yeah i think when like you know hockey wasn't a thing versus hockey not being figured out i think hockey like always was a thing maybe not always figured out completely and the thing with marine ford is oda chose to emphasize narrative like a narrative value um over like a like a progression like thing where hiding a power system that is like so core to your entire series for a major war most series show you the power system before you get to a level like that but in one piece oda chose to give you the perspective of luffy to make it understand this is how weird it looks to normal people right like this is how absurd all of this this is to someone who doesn't see but you also don't think about it like that right like people just kind of accepted it like oh he's able to do this he's doing that like all this crazy stuff that's yeah. what it looks like to everybody else and then then you there's hear there's already so much to take in and then it puts it all under an umbrella right and so oda had to hide something and write something that most people don't find themselves in and that's incredibly hard and it could be a thing where he's figuring it out and he used that maybe it was like oh i want to use this arc to like really play with the uh concept art so i'll make it invisible but it's still concept art it that's like a there's like so many ways you can understand reedford and realize that the fighting was not the emphasis em like the focal point of that thing it was the it was the will the desires that luffy had that had him awaken conquerors the the environment that people were in the fighting was secondary right like if you were gonna see the warlords interact like that you know it would they would have been introduced a lot differently moria did one attack and that was kind of it yeah yeah they, they would have been used differently in a, in a huge way so i, I think see kuma could have changed the battlefield too but he just did one attack right he did he did the he, he did the shock to to oars and then he quote unquote fought ivankov and that was kind of it yeah no kuma the real kuma i think it had enough damage to also be said to like destroy the world because he like ursula shocked compressed air or whatever it's called but like what's stopping him from just continually doing that because that little bit did a lot of damage and i'm like, like sitting there like kuma also has like shockwave powers like right like he could create the spirit bomb in the size like in a paw and then just blast out an entire thing like yeah kuma's insane too like in when i i was saying that because when you were talking about Shanks' power level raising the ceiling, I think there's stuff like that in between too, where it's like Devil Fruits were like neutered, kind of, in a way, 
And I feel like we're gonna we're gonna start getting to a level where also the devil fruit powers are going to get to an absurd place as well. Uh, oh yeah, we I feel like we're that. gonna see that with Blackbeard's crew, to be honest, since they're like devil yeah. fruit specialists in a way. Exactly. I feel like, like for Blackbeard's crew, especially with I, I keep on going back to Burgess, but that's strength strength fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I hate to bring up Bleach again, but there's a character in Bleach who he kind of just gets as strong as he can imagine. And I'm yeah. like, like, what are the limits of the strength, strength? That's that's really abstract in a way. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and I I say all of this because you know when the, another another thing that One Piece adjacent people, I, I don't think like One Piece true fans see it like this, but they were saying like, oh, it's so boring. Hockey, I like the world with Devil Fruits more, like pre-time skip and like hockey ruined One Piece or hockey like is more boring or hockey ru like, you know, uh, the, many iterations of that. And like, I think Devil Fruits are not thrown to the wayside. Like we had an entire arc about it, literally showing that we still don't really know about these things. Right. So like, just like hockey is going to be going to a crazy level, Devil Fruits will as well. They're both going to get their shine. And and there th there's gonna be a connection that'll explain why the devil fruits are, are the way they are, and so ugh, there's so many exciting things left because I can't even imagine what the last saga is gonna look like if this is if this, Shanks is the ceiling and there's so much in between between devil fruits and hockey, it's gonna look like like you're not gonna recognize it from chapter one. Absolutely oh yeah, not. yeah, like it's crazy. And the only reason I bring up Mihawk is because I see some people calling like Mihawk a fraud or oh why are people comparing Shanks to Mihawk Still. even nowadays? Yeah. And it's like, bro, what are you talking like? Yeah. People, yeah, people yeah. in the world of One Piece compare them. Like, what are you on about? Yeah. Like the yeah. Navy compares them. The freaking Shanks compares them. Whitebeard compares them. Like they they've clashed. Like and and the thing is is that we, we talked about like who could survive divine departure apparently mihawk cl can clash with this yeah uh, it, like like maybe he needs a black blade to do it maybe like he got that's where the black blade came from he <laughs> that's where the pants. swordsmanship comes from yeah yeah like he's terrified of shanks so he got so strong and now he's just memeing on him now he has one arm and he knows that shanks won't fight him now but like the, like can other blades withstand anything beyond divine departure like I, people like i think it's fair to say like zoro loses to this right like it, not just <laughs> loses to this but all of his swords like are probably like what mihawk did in chapter uh 51 or whatever it was uh that shanks does that to zoro right now like he doesn't have a black blade and i don't know if zoro can blacken his blades fast enough to stop shanks from this <laughs> It's it's funny you bring up Zoro because like I just keep on looking at Killer and it's like yo Killer tried to mimic what Zoro did bro like he's not that guy but even then even if it was Zoro in Killer's place I don't know if Zoro could block this and be okay like what Zoro blocked the Kaido and Big Mom one long enough to where everybody could escape but yeah. even then after that attack Zoro was kind of done right yeah and in anime like he was like he was like yo like my my ribs are broken <laughs> like kind of yeah so so in oh, yo, the like, anime I'm, I'm they stretch they stretch it out to three minutes so anime canon is zoro held off ikoku sovereignty from big mom and kaido for three minutes because that's how long that scene hey took. one pacing bro <laughs> And so, and not, like they, 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 it looked visually nice, but then like I, I put it upon myself to count the seconds because like I was like, oh, they're gonna stretch this part out. Let's see how much because then you could power scale Zoro. But um, it, I think it's even funnier. Um, I, I did a eulogy for Kid and I made the comparison to Zoro. That's why his killer is so cool. He's supposed to be that mirror. And Oda did them extra dirty by even putting in Ikoku Sovereign to here. He's like, here, here, killer, here's your chance to mimic Zoro. <laughs> oh, wait, you died to splash damage. <laughs> like, oh, that's so pain. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it like that. You're right. <laughs> this this is the attack that killer should have blocked the Hakuoku Sovereignty. <laughs> But and he was—he was—he couldn't move. He was paralyzed, bro. Like, and, and you said Zoro like broken ribs. No, Zoro broke his and all of his bones. Apparently, according to law, he's like, "How are you standing?" He stands up. He says, "Law, this will be my final attack. I'm putting my all into this." And he's like, "Bro, what do you mean? You're fucking roasted!" Like, what? every bone in his body's broken. <laughs> and he does that, and and even Kaido's like, "Huh?" Like, he, Zoro at least has that, right? And like, kid or killer 
didn't even get to defend kid he didn't even get to jump in front he died to splash damage like i need to see the anime scene where shanks hits him with the divine departure and killer's not fast enough because no one can react to this as we understood it'd be crazy if he could react to this but no he doesn't even have the time so then in the anime the way they have to animate it is killer just bounces back randomly and it's like oh and then he's half his mass is cracked he's bleeding his crew thinks he's dead like like, all from splash damage. That's how powerful this was. <laughs> oh my god. Imagine Luffy. We, we just like, witnessed hawk. feats on feats, bro. <laughs> he, uh, that's what this Luffy, is. Like, Bajran, Gun, Onigashima, and Wano got destroyed for some reason, which almost actually happened when you think about it because the volcano. But, like, just some random side character like 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 zoro hit somebody on the head and then everybody over next to them passes away because that's what happened to everybody else right they got blasted by conquerors hockey off of the blast and passed out like all of them yeah it wasn't group. even aimed at them <laughs> it was just aimed at kid yeah they're just like they're literally dead someone someone said um oh joy boy joy boy said that what if uh kill uh all shanks did was I'm twisting his words. I'm twisting his words. He said it makes sense that Kid is, uh, he's not dead. He's knocked out because he was the closest one to the Conqueror's Hockey. And so while the attack was strong, the Conqueror's Hockey is the reason why he's still down. And I'm twisting it into like, what? What if Shanks actually only destroyed the railgun and his Conqueror's Hockey did all the damage to, to Kid and Kid's knocked out from that? Like, he didn't even mean to kill Kid or be like that. Because why tell Dorian Brogy to finish it? If he actually wanted to kill Kid, he could have just done it, right? He could have. I, I, I feel like Shanks in a way spared him. I mean, probably not because he's sinking. He knows he has a devil fruit. Yeah, see, and... Uh, you know, I'm, I am I want to transition to the Hopium, right? Because people are going to say, like, you guys, especially this day after the chapter. I think by the end of the break week, more people are going to be like, yeah, Kid's probably alive. It's going to digest. They're going to I, I think up. Kid's alive. I, yeah. In no world is Kid actually no, dead. No, but right now, we're going to get 30% of comments, Hopium. What, what Hopium are they smoking on? All that shit. We're going to get that um they they're gonna be like kid shanks has the first body in the entire series his crew does like shanks is the guy to kill this is what we're we're hoping they're hoping for but killer and kid they're alive they're alive they're gonna play a role later on in the story not a great the worst one. part is that during the sbs uh th this goes back to the joyous pirate crew thing but odo was like oh yeah uh you know the people in ibisu town killer their smile devil fruit side effects are never going to be like, I, I guess he didn't say never, but they, they haven't been cured in Wano. Chopper yeah. could not cure it at that time. And Oda finishes it off by saying, but thankfully, since Killer does have a smile devil fruit and he laughs a lot, they're now a joyous pirate band. And then two weeks later, we get this chapter. The yeah. end of the joyous pirate band. Rest in peace, man. I, you know, because of that, I was like, oh, maybe these guys have plot armor. You know, may, maybe they will actually get out of this fight with Shanks with a W. But it just, it, it didn't happen. They actually just lost their Poneglyphs, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they did. lost, like, what, three of them? All they needed to do was take the cram, like, like it, the homework was due in five minutes, recopy the Poneglyphs, give them a copy. Oh, around. dude, that's what I would have done. I would have made a copy of the copy. Yeah, exactly. Like, if would, kids crew was smart, if any crew was smart, if any crew was smart, you would literally just keep on making copies of the Poneglyphs and maybe not sell them. I mean, I guess you could, if you just wanted money, you could probably sell the Poneglyphs for a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the thing is, like, and then it, it, it end up going to, like, uh, gift stores, you know what I mean? It would, yeah, you know how, everybody like, would have it. Like, like the oh, Mona here's Lisa. the Zell Poneglyphs. Yeah, like the Mona Lisa's on t-shirts, right? That's how it works. Like the source, you s start selling copies, imitations, then you get it on t-shirts. That's what happened with the Poneglyphs. And then, you know, some kid finds Laugh Tale because he's like, he has the red collection or something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the Poneglyphs though, do you think these are three Poneglyphs or two? Uh, I think it, it looks like three to me. Like I, I can see three different binds. I. I I believe this is three Poneglyphs. It because I, I see I, some people are saying like, "Oh, kid doesn't have the Zoe one. Kid doesn't have the Zoe one." But I think the Poneglyph that Law gave them in Wano was the Zoe one. 
Yeah, it's interesting because that's it's, the only thing that would make sense. Like, yeah. Why would kid go to, or killer go to Zoe? But at the same time, the other side of it is, it aren't there times when like Luffy? No, no, I don't think there is actually. I was thinking like it wouldn't be weird for killer to, you know, go to uh like afterwards, you know go to the minx like he's gonna be out of the story for a while it's not like killer comes back it's not like a saba odi parallel where it's like the straw hats were eradicated and the next chapter you see like they're not eradicated right that's not happening here with kid, kid even though he's alive i doubt oda in 1080 is like yeah he's good he's fine right but like i feel like people find themselves in weird places and maybe kid ends up in a weird place and that leads him to the minx maybe he gets it that way but ultimately i don't think it matters i don't think it matters about the poneglyphs because what what i kind of like took away this is also for the york thing like it i i think we talked about it in the members uh call was um that because of blackbeard showing up i feel like york now plays a minor role like egghead was a more constrained thing and it was a way for us to learn about all the different elements involved cp0 vegapunk all the satellites uh, for us to like look into these characters learn them right because we're gonna study all the details right but that's not that wasn't the end game of that right like this york situation might be confined unless york elevates which is fine but if blackbeard's here maybe it becomes a blackbeard gorosei centric like uh driven ending for egghead um and similarly i think this at the minimum tells me that i don't think that kid is gonna play like that amazing role that you know like a white beard character would have right like i think kid is going to be important from like a narrative position right he's the luffy that failed or something he's a luffy that went through a more greedy route um thematically connecting to you know york being in the name of greed blackbeard is greedy luffy you know everyone's greedy in a situation in in a sense in this chapter like shanks is so greedy to not greedy but like he he's got where he is by uh, pursuing his desires but what i'm saying with kid is like i think that there's going to be a certain amount of things that we learn about him and the handoff of the poneglyphs is like a symbolism of that like kid isn't here if he comes back in the story it's not because of the pirate king story there's something else um that kid's gonna do play a role and maybe the best way to you know uh, explain it would just be maybe his devil fruit is important for a certain reason and maybe his devil fruit ends up being uh the reason why he stays in the story uh the power that he holds the the mag magnetic uh system that the grand line has still hasn't been explained right if we're talking about gra like not gravity but like uh um solar systems and stuff like that gravity is super important and electromagnetism is like very ingrained in that um especially when it comes to like the poles the spinning and stuff like that so i don't know i don't know i just i feel like that though kid will be back i don't think it's what people think of like you know him going to laugh till how important is that i don't know i don't know anymore i don't think like you know i i saw that future in the past but i don't necessarily see that anymore with what we're seeing of him now um and that could be something that changed over time with oda or that could be something that oda just you know chose to do do you see think, do you see kid going there that far though still i i think like i said i i think kid will still play a big role in the end of the series mm -hmm. like even if he doesn't have the role you're describing i could totally see him coming in for the final battle or final war just for like one good shot like oh Luffy's fighting him. Oh, Law's here too. I'm gonna show up as well, and I'm gonna help in this fight. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like he you know, is definitely gonna come back as some ally, which he I, kind of already is in a way. In a weird way, Kid would be Shanks's not like realistically, but Shanks's Bellamy, right? Where Luffy broke and shattered his dreams so much that Bellamy changed afterwards and now ironically he's helping people pursue their dreams by making pirate flags and that's you know the symbolism of you like we talked about at the beginning of the call but um you know it, it could be that kid ends up in a similar state like that where like shanks literally destroyed his dreams and put him on a different path like that's how badly he was defeated in a and weird was... way i know people compare 
kid to like white beard like oh he's this era's white beard which kind of looking rough right now but <laughs> if he was it, technically white beard was never going for the one piece so maybe this is where a kid stops and he's like you know what i'm just gonna chill you know i i would say it's more like shiki like shiki like was you know maybe that guy but like he you know the oda didn't paint him the greatest light in strong world right but also he kind of just like took on battles that were beyond him right like the roger situation i guess wasn't that big of a difference because it, it was a difficult fight but like then he ran up on marine ford uh, so try to solo dolo sengoku and garp and it's like uh, you know it's a it's a twisted thing because it's not similar in kids character in, in a lot of ways uh the character is very different but that's kind of where where i'd put kid more of like just being like way beyond himself you know yeah yeah i mean i'm, I'm totally there man whatever a kid has in store it's gotta it's gotta pick him up this can't be yeah. the end like this is this is the sabote parallel you know yeah, yeah. And, like, Lu you know, Luffy picked himself up after that. I feel like Kid could. I think, like, Luffy... So, I talked about this, how, like, Luffy's lessons were dispersed. Like, he fought Kaido. But prior to that, I think the first time he registered his weakness was Aokiji, right? And But the thing is, they reacted very differently. Like, Luffy's first instinct was he has crew to run. He told his crew to run, and then he set a deal with Aokiji that Aokiji, in hindsight, was like, damn it, I can't go after your crew, right? And, yeah. like, the Aokiji thing is, like, Luffy is, like, low... Like, if Luffy saw uh, uh, Aokiji ever again, he wouldn't run up on him unless there was a good reason, right? Like, Marineford, like, yes, he didn't have a choice, right? But, like, in this instance kid in if kid was in aokiji's state uh, of um like in the parallel situation which he was right he already barely he never even got to see shanks the first run and he had two years to sit on it he didn't learn his lesson now he sees shanks himself and he hits that world and i think it's like all of luffy's lessons lessons saba odi but then uh the marine ford war where luffy ends up having like despair and 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 like he realized what was truly important right he lost his brother but he still had things in the present that was a le lesson he learned by seeing the power ceiling that was unfathomable i i'm mincing the words that jinbei said but jinbei said that luffy ran into a wall and realized how po how powerful your enemies are essentially like i i hope that that's where kid is at here that i would like that and that doesn't mean that kid becomes a good person or any less vicious it just means that he acts he can grow his behavior is different and that could benefit him in in many ways right decision making puts you in really great places you don't need great power to behind that but maybe this is where he you know randomly gets hockey but like he doesn't have enough time I, that's where i'm with at also with last saga is like kid doesn't have the 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 timeline uh on his side in terms of becoming a stronger strong enough character in my opinion unless he had like a really doing it with him right learning on yeah. his own that's gonna take a long time so and and the I man think, with burn marks is gonna train him we're gonna yeah, see Saul like I hey here you comments. go kid try this yeah. out yeah and it's like I, that's cool like sure we can think of that but like i think something else that oh we we should realize from this chapter is ultimately the thing that kid does not have that even buggy has we talked about buggy heavily is kid doesn't have oda's love you wouldn't paint a picture that you love in this way. The only time where it looks like Oda likes Kid is during Udon, when he's like neck and neck with Luffy and picking up boulders off the ground, which I mean isn't really like a feat, but <laughs> he looked cool, right? Oda made him look really cool. Like, and then like, when he was fighting Big Mom and Kaido, Kid looked he, pretty decent. And I was like, you know what? Maybe Oda, maybe this is going to be Kid's arc. Yeah, yeah. I, I made a fun video about that because at the time when Luffy's uh, Luffy's Devil Fruit was revealed as a mythical Zoan, I was like, huh, you know, now we can attribute a lot of Luffy's strength to a mythical Zoan because that's what it does give you. It gives you more durability, more strength. That's how Zoans work. But how much of it was Luffy on his own versus like natural? I don't think that's an important dis discrimin like thing to do. Uh, like di dissect um i think luffy at his strength it makes sense given his lineage too right there's so many factors that combine yeah. but when it comes to kid 
Oda showed him the exact same light. So I was like, is that a parallel? Like they paralleled so many things. Even Life Return was uh, was essentially uh, paralleled with Luffy there. And um, I was like, huh, I wonder if like later down the line, we find out that the reason why Kid's power sucks is because he's not a magnet man. He's a mythical Zoan that just has like sort of magnetic powers, which is why he can't use it right. Hey, away. I hope. Hey, th- that that's hella cope. But man, I, I think that'll be cool. <laughs> and and now, like, I'm rethinking about this because another situation that they parallel this to is when Kaido knocked out Luffy. Right? Kaido did that many times, and then the last time he did it, he he awakened. Right? You know so what? Shanks did Imagine that all in after one this. go. Imagine after this kid gets back up and then he just fights Shanks again. He's like, you know what? I didn't hear no bell. Like, give me back the Poneglyphs. Like, maybe that's what we're in store for. I, you know what's you know crazy? What? Kaido, Kaido's going to get back up from the magma. He's going to fight Luffy one more time. The raid on Onigashima isn't over. But also, the fight against Shanks isn't over too. KKS. It's, it's still going. KKS. I, I, I saw the narrator box, but I didn't I didn't hear it. I didn't hear the narrator box. The, the, the fight's still raging. You've yeah. convinced me, Par. Sabo, no, he, like, I have not heard. It's, you know what's crazy? Everybody should know. If you guys what's are, up? like, like they're wondering, like, is Par off the deep end? Does he really think this is about Kid? Go watch my live stream. You, you would know what I think about Kid <laughs> during the live stream. But, like, imagine, like, I still haven't heard from Kid fans. I, I read a comment to you where, like, uh, someone said, someone said on the stream that um, uh, anyone above the age of 12 wouldn't find any of the kids slander funny. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I think it's kind of funny. I think a lot of people thought that. I feel like you could find a really big pool of people over 12 who are laughing at kid right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so- not even like kid slander because it, it's just kid facts in a way, right? Yeah, and it's Shanks like, like it's, it's It's literally just the chapter though. Yeah, and so so like I I have not heard this cope yet where kid awakens to a mythical Zoan paralleling Luffy and he stands back up through some absurd way, right? Yeah, he's dead, but we don't know what happens when he awakens. Can he magnetize the water away from him? Un- be, you, dude, imagine he magnetizes the water. No. Uh, that would be too good. See that that that's don't don't hit me with the, the hopium anymore. Yo, wait, wait. Tell like me I said, I wanted, I wanted Kid to have a clash. Yeah. I, I didn't think he'd win. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. at the end of the day, he lost. Whether it's uh, Kid Slander or not, it's, it's facts. It is chapter 1079. Like, even if you don't want to call it Slander, this chapter exists. Kid losing to, in a singular hit. It, it's 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 there it, if you go tomorrow and google this on the wiki it, you're, this is gonna pull up like did shanks did, did kid lose yes what was the fight a one tap yes <laughs> did did that. kid have a chance to block it no did kid clash no like it's not even slander it's genuine facts about I what happened the, the the wiki to quote this and like say like the community epithet like the the greatest one tap of one piece history i need them to like this is this is the greatest one tap hey if you want to twist it you can even say that kid took part in one of the best feats in one piece yeah yeah he was on the receiving end exactly of one of the strongest attacks yeah you know on like like i said yeah, there's and good so and bads for this. The 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 my my copium that hopium no not even hopium that's like that's like indoctrinadium like that's like that's crazy that's a crazy level like you're in a kid cultium right like but the thing that that the, the reason why what I said will not happen right because it's because kid is not the main character it's because kid does not it does is not loved in this series that is why what i explained as cool as that sounded right he awakens in the water we know that devil fruit users in the water suck ass but then kid magnetize the water creates the bubble and you're like nani and then and then like that's a main character treatment the kid is not that that is why we're getting what we're getting kids gonna come back 30 chapters from now and we're like Yep, he's back. The killed pirates are here. They returned. You know, they can't use their name because they're embarrassed. If we do get Kid one more time before 30 chapters or whatever, I really hope it's the next chapter. And we, not like a whole Kid thing, but if we just get one panel of somebody picking Kid up off the shore, dope. <laughs> like Pell, like the doctor or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like how, how, how we saw Pell was alive or how we saw Pound was alive. <laughs> like, like, you know, I think. Like, just, the just way... one panel just to give us hope. 
the Pell one was like, uh, was it was it? Yeah, it was the doctor or whatever. Like later on, at the end of it, was like had the scarf or whatever. And like, yeah, that's and he was saw. he was like, hey buddy, you look really bad. Yeah, and then we like, see are you the sure scarf. you can walk around? And then the guy turns around, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, like, like okay. And, we get gotcha. that same thing and we see like the remnants of killer's mask like a part of it or something and we're like oh they're with the doctors this random doctor at the bottom of the ocean or like maybe maybe because of this we actually see killer's face for the first time like Ooh. full face Ooh, and he's see that would, son. you know that would be go that would go kind of hard yeah we yeah, finally yeah. see the forehead see the thing is if he's shiki's son and is captain john's son that explains how they survived this right like that would give them the lineage. Plot armor yeah, at least, like, they need some love, right? And coming back in the story does take a little bit of love. If I remember Lo the other really day when we were them, talking about this, I was like, yo, I was coping so hard, I, I by accident, gave Kid the Will of D. Like, yeah, he needs something like that. Yeah. Like, for yeah. Law, Law's gonna lose. I, I don't think a lot of people think Law's gonna win the fight against Blackbeard, mm -hmm. but Law's not gonna die. He's he has the Will of D. He, you know, he has the five billion fruit. He's foreshadowed to do he the immortality surgery he also has like the water he doesn't pot. really have any of that which is just unfortunate plot armor wise <laughs> yeah and so it, you that's another great point because that is the other difference besides luffy right kid doesn't even have what keeps law in the story the d the water he doesn't the have the middle initial it's it's yeah. unfortunate yeah, he should have yeah. got his name changed. Yeah, he should have. You know, he how expensive got it. is that it's name change? It's not it's that not much that expensive. Really. Yeah, yeah. So, with that being the case, man, is is there anything else you want to end off before we head out? Um, any any final topics? No, I think I think we covered the current past, uh, past present, future. I think the main thing Ten is seconds like, in the it, past. Yeah, like we memed, but like these memes like we try to we try to keep original content and like the live stream like we went off on kid and killer and i still feel like we could continue to make more memes. oh like how this this will be this will go down the history books i've never seen so many people slander kid in my life and oh, it so is i crazy. have a question i have a What's question up? for you right so when it comes down to this chapter people are asking is this good writing and you, I think you said like people said that this is mid. They didn't like this chapter, and it, it, it I, depends. It, it depends. Uh, yeah. on the Fallout. Okay. It, it depends on if you're a, if you're a Shanks fan, this is great writing. If you're a mm -hmm. kid fan, it's not the best writing. If you're in the middle, you might lean on this might be bad writing because kid's character was just tossed to the side. But mm -hmm. depending on how Oda plays it, this could be great writing, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it, it's hard to determine if this is good or bad writing based off of this one chapter without seeing the outcome of this event yeah yeah like like in hindsight like in hindsight skypea was not the best right skypea is a very divisive arc in hindsight though skypea was set up for a lot of things in the future a lot of themes that we saw from skypea are echoed in the present mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how it is is this bad writing we can't tell until the story's over until we see more of kidder more of shanks yeah. will this lead a kid getting growth is this setup for shanks only getting knocked down too we, we don't really know it, it, yeah. it's it's really hard to say i actually want to recontextualize kids thing i think i think i'm gonna triple quadruple down that kid's coming back the reason why is he is luffy's parallel right but seemingly he hasn't experienced all of luffy's traumas and i think what happened in this chapter and i might make a video on this is that what shanks did was he gave all of Luffy's trauma throughout the entire Grand Line all in a single blow. He took his crew, he no-diffed him, showed him true ultimate power. Right? Showed he did him not Little him, Garden. He did not like do the anime thing of, of, of the beginning, middle, of, of the end of power, of scaling up, meeting. No, he gave him the end stage, the very beginning. Gave him all the trauma, but then on top of that, he lost his ship. The ship that made them innocent, right? Because the Straw Hats were innocent with the Going Merry. Then once they started, you know, losing the Merry, they became more and more immature. And I think that says a lot about the ship, right? This was the ship that was their, you know, their girl, right? Like maybe that made them naive to the world because they, you know, they they we have the punk Victoria them. by our side. She'll never let us down. Yeah, yeah. Like and they so lost it, bro. I think. I think what i'm gonna remember this as is shanks put all of luffy you know how zoro took all of luffy's pain in a bubble up in, in, in thriller bark kid took all of luffy's life experiences and traumas and put it in one 10 second 
quick life flashing death moment you know if he had kid everything survives, just hit him you know kid might have a nothing happen moment and i hope that's not what the case because then he won't develop but like like he's gonna be like yeah yeah we're good you know what i mean at the bottom <laughs> of the ocean as he dies like i don't i don't know how he lives it's revealed that kids part fishman so he'll survive this yeah i th i said that but then but then you know what i remembered i said that on the live stream it's like my visceral reaction is like oda's gonna keep him alive he's a fishman but then i remembered they waterboarded them in in udon to oh screw. yeah no no he's fishman now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he just transitioned. He transitioned. No. He just Sign he just transitioned. Trans fish. No. Yeah, he, yeah, he he's now a fish. Same with Killer too. They 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 learn from their mistakes in Udon. They they're gonna survive this. Wait, so, wait, 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 wait. wait. Real quick, do you think the hormone fruit could change your species? It should be able to, right? Like That'd theoretically, if you wanted to become a fishman, you could just ask Ivankov. That'd maybe maybe that's so like the awakening of the pair meat. Oh yeah. no, wait, if you awaken it, you could turn everybody around you into like a fisherman, huh? Oh my god, that'd be crazy. That'd be if broken. That's how that fruit works. Imagine well, Ivankov I'm... rolled up to, to Marine Ford and just awakened and everybody turned into a different <laughs> gender. No, that's chaos, bro. That's cursed. <laughs> actually cursed. No, he turned all the Celestial Dragon into fishermen. That's actually the end of the story. Like everyone's just fish at the end of it. Oh my oh, god. Oh, turn the celestial dragons into fishmen. Yeah, that's how my theory comes true. A G G. Yeah. My no, but is... then they'd be strong. No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. K keep the celestial dragons as is so we can beat them down. That's the best. Best outcome. Yeah. I'm good so, now. <laughs> on that note, we're going to end off here. Thank you guys for stopping by and enjoying these, uh, I think, two hours. Two yeah. hours of content here. Yeah. I really yep. appreciate it. Break and week. there is a break week, but we might have some things cooked up on the side. Who really knows? Well, we'll see when we get there. But with that being said, see you guys at a 1080. Peace out.